want to call this uh, July 7th meeting in the matter of town council to order. Let's uh, rise for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you and uh, welcome. I see we have uh, no presentations, no guest speakers tonight. First on our agenda is the uh, minutes, both the closed and the open meeting minutes for June 2nd. Um, I'll move we accept them. Uh, I have a second. Did anybody have any changes in them? I didn't run across any. No. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 That was unanimous. And Lisa, if Debbie does not hesitate to interrupt us when we're, when we're getting ahead of her, she couldn't tell what's going on. So you feel free to do the same. <laughs> okay. Um, police report. I think we have a new trooper here today. Welcome. Now, is it is it TFC Thompson? Am I reading everything correctly from here? Welcome. <laughs> I was trying to make sure I could read the name badge at this distance. That's not bad for eyesight for somebody my age. <laughs> With no glasses or a contact. Go ahead. Good evening, everyone. I'm Trooper Thompson. Um, currently assigned for Westminster Berg. I'm newly down to Mount Airy. I will pull your mic up so you can hear you. Newly assigned to Mount Airy as a resident trooper. I will be giving the June monthly report to the town council. Um, for June, in our efforts to, um, we handled 301 total calls in, in town and 14 calls out of town. And with, on that note, um, as Mount Airy Troopers, we attempted to reduce the crime. Therefore, we did 98 business checks. We did 29 school checks and 124 patrol checks. With that, there was only one burglary that was reported. Um, juvenile complaints went down from seven to five. And there was seven thefts, which were actually closed either by, a, um, by arrest or citations. There were only three CDS arrests, and there was four non-CDS arrests. Also, um, as far as the events in the town, the Lions Cup Carnival from June 2nd to June 7th went pretty well. Um, there was no serious incidents or crimes committed. Um, there was a complaint that we received for Wendy Knoll and Park Avenue. There was a, someone complained that um, vehicles weren't stopping at the stop sign. So on several dates, 617, 618, and 620, the Mount Airy Troopers said at Wendy Knoll and Park Avenue to enforce, enforce traffic for approximately a half hour each day. Um, on the second page, you'll notice all of our um, reports that we did for the month. Most of them are thefts, which happened on East Ridgeville, um, which were pretty much closed by arrest or by summons. Um, third page is just explaining everything from the second page. Our fourth page is our um, gas, total <coughs> gas that we've used for each vehicle in uh, June. Well, thank you very much. And, uh, any questions, anybody? Uh, just a couple quick comments. No. Uh, actually, I've spoke with Corporal Knowles, and uh, they do owe us a roster for the council. I wanted to make sure you all had a roster to, that you knew who your troopers were. We've had some changes. In our yes. trooper program, we've lost Sergeant Keller. Yes. And uh, 
myself, John Stumeyer, who's a state police liaison, Lisa and Debbie, we all met with the lieutenant and the new corporal, and uh, we will be expecting that update at Rouster to follow up so we can get that out to the town council. Okay. Other than that, thank, thank you for a great job. Okay. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Next up, uh, we have Bruce Walls from the Manor Volunteer Fire Company. Welcome, Bruce. Welcome. Please let me get the store account right here. Self promotion in there. <laughs> <laughs> we like it. Look in front of our table. You know, every time I look and I see, you know, like the government officials, they always have something going on on Twitter. Nice. So we wanted to be, you know, right up there with them. But we, we just went on Twitter this week. Uh, so I'll start with this. If you're on Twitter, you can follow the Manorey Volunteer Fire Company at MAVFC1. And we'll be t starting some tweets about our carnival. So if you want to find out what's going on at the carnival, we're hoping to have live tweets from the carnival. Uh, hashtag MAVFC Carnival. So we're trying to get into the modern age here. Uh, I had to track down a couple junior members to explain to me how to do it. <laughs> we finally got it working. Um, for the month of June, uh, rescue EMS calls, we had 73 in Carroll, uh, 67 in Frederick, 7 in Howard, and 3 in Montgomery for a total of 150 incidents. Firewise, we had 10 in Carroll, 4 in Frederick, and 1 in Howard for a total of 15 calls, which gave us 83 incidents in Carroll, 71 in Frederick, 8 in Howard, and 3 in Montgomery for a total of 165 incidents for the month. And I want to remind everybody that I expect to see everyone starting on the 21st at the Carnival Grounds for our annual Carnival. Attendance is mandatory. So we are, we are looking forward to uh, you coming out and supporting us for our major fundraising event. Most of us will be in the dunk tank on Monday night in yes. alternating shifts. So here's Good. your big chance, folks. Bob King goes first, so okay. be there early. Okay. Get there early if you want to dunk Bob. All right. uh, probably get there late if you want to dunk me because I usually take the late shift. Okay. We're looking forward. Thank you for participating in that way. Bruce, I always enjoy it. <laughs> I have a question before you leave, and it's probably helpful to have David Dunn uh, from Frederick County in the audience. I had a conversation today with the planning chairman about the fire department and fundings for fire departments. Mount Airy gives uh, an amount to the fire department. Do municipalities in Carroll or Frederick County generally uh, fully fund fire departments? How is that normally handled? No, um, it, it almost I'm talking about full funding. Oh, nobody fully funds them. Okay. The county doesn't even fully fund us. Okay. But any fire departments in general, I'm trying to get In a... Carroll, I believe almost all the municipalities give something, but it's, uh, Manor is very generous. Well, and I'm not worried about that. I'm just thinking overall, let's overall, say, we're, we're, as we're losing volunteers. And let comes from that, yes. Yes, we lose volunteers and you have to start paying people. Right. I mean, whose burden is it to provide fire protection? Does it normally fall on a municipality? Uh, it'd be a, you'd have to read your town code. Okay. And see who has the actual responsibility for it. Okay. In Frederick County, I believe mainly it's funded by the county, David. Yes. yes. Uh, most municipalities, y'all are in the highest. Uh, runs with about uh, 10000 a year, gross month about uh, 15000 a year. I'm not even talking about what we give. That's not, oh, okay. the, that's not really the question. The question is how do you support, uh, provide protection in Frederick County? How are fire departments generally funded? Through the county? Okay, but generally not by the municipalities, and I'm talking wholly. I'm not talking these donations. Okay, well, thank you. Unfortunately, it's two different systems because they have an overlay. They have a different system. system overlaid over the volunteer. Yes. System, whereas we have the 14 independent corporations that are getting funding to allow those individual corporations to staff as necessary. And the reason so for the question model. is, is just to make sure you have what you need to provide us the essential services you provide us. And I know Chris is looking at that for the future as well. Right, right. we have provided that. That, that, that does beg the question, if in Frederick they have the, an overlay system, assuming or if at some point um, Mount Airy comes up short of volunteers, short of staffing, whatever the reason is, has Frederick offered to provide overlay into our fire department to cover the part of Frederick we, you guys cover? That idea has been mentioned, uh, but it's never gone anywhere because of all the logistics of who would supervise the employee, who would provide everything from workman's comp to uniforms to integrating with our system. They'd have to have Carroll medical protocol authority and it, it would 
it, 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 having a physical person placed in there that's an employee of Frederick County would be logistically difficult. What would be the better would just be to get the money for what it would right. cost, so and we would hire an additional person. So, right. So, so Dave, we'll put you on the spot then, which is I thought where Bruce was going, and I'll go there right with him. Um, in for the tax revenue that Mount Airy contributes to Frederick County, I mean, equity would dictate that if you all don't provide manpower, you would. Equity would dictate you power services. You provide services in kind. So, for argument's sake, if if a man year for a, a fire person was 60k, and well, you know, two people is called for here, then shouldn't Frederick County look at providing 100, 120k to the fire department here to take care of the responsibilities in our area? Wouldn't that be equitable? And I know I'm putting you on the spot, but I'm it doing makes it on purpose. Sense. Uh, every year, the county gets uh, 30 to 40 requests. For Additional paid volunteers, paid uh, firefighters right. to staff uh, some of the uh, you know 27 fire departments that we have in the county, and we can never be but, satisfied. Right, but in this case, it's not. We're not requesting additional. We're just requesting equity. So it, it it's somewhat complicated. We met on this subject. Right? Yeah, we have meetings here. We've had meetings here with Commissioner Young. Young. We met downstairs on the same well, actually, this has been going on for 20 years. Yeah. So I, I remember discussing it 12 years ago. And the, you know, Frederick County's perspective at that point, and I can see it, is, you know, there are Frederick County fire stations that are on the border with Carroll County and with Washington County. And Carroll County doesn't fund the stations you know, that are on the Frederick County border with Carroll, even though they service that area of Carroll County. And Washington County doesn't fund the Frederick County fire stations that are on the border with Washington County that go across the line. So the, the rule has always kind of been whatever company it is, and we have a Carroll County but, company, but the taxing they take care of it. But in that, in, we're unique in that Frederick County has taxing authority and collects tax revenue off of our town citizens in Frederick well, no, County. actually, there is a there is a reduction in the taxes specifically to allow the town to fund that. Right, and we also that is taken care of in a funding structure. Overlay, correct. There is a funding so, structure in place that does that. The, the Frederick County side so of the town fits into that very new market now. overlay. Right. Oh, we've been and discussing and that. And they're supposed to be first yeah. responders in that area. Now they're not as close, and Mount Airy beats them to it. This, but. this has been like somebody mentioned. It's been ongoing. Well, you can just take it back. It's still a concern, and it will become more. It'll become more of a concern as we get yeah. away from the volunteer company to a paid company. And that's really where I was yeah. going. So just let them know that when you go back and you give your feedback, we really appreciate you yeah, being here. Uh, we, the yeah. other argument we always get is when we have um, three or four all volunteer that have no paid personnel, and um, they would like to be treated better than the ones. That <laughs> Interesting, interesting. That's another argument. So it's a topic that's not going away. We talk about it a lot. I will pass on. Again. Yeah, just pass it on. It's still an interest, and as things change, it'll become more. We, and we are looking forward to working with the new District 2 Council person. Well, that's true. It will give us, I think, more emphasis on our needs in this area okay, yeah. than we've had previously with the at large county commissioners. Well, good to know. That's a good point. Thanks, Bruce. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, David. All right, up next is uh, community concerns, this comments. This is a chance when if there's anybody in the audience who wants to bring anything up to the council, come on up to the, uh, come on up to the podium. And if you want to go next, line up, line up behind us. Go ahead. Go ahead, Teresa. And identify yourself, Teresa. And I will. Mm -hmm. All right, my name is Teresa Postrock. And this, I am the co-chair for the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk with, with Sheila Wallace here, my, my co-chair. This will be our fourth walk this year. 
um, this year, fourth walk, fourth year of doing the, the fourth season. annual walk. Thank you. Fourth annual walk, and it's October 19th at Watkins Park. Um, I would like to bring the mayor up here for a moment, please. Oh, there you go, Pat. If it would be so kind. It's a good thing I dress. I'm glad you look nice tonight. I always ask what they want me for before I go up. <laughs> You're smarter than me. I just want to well, first of all, I want to thank Mayor Rockenberg for his outstanding support for Making Strides. Due to his support, we have been extremely successful. We've never, every year we've increased. Last year was 90 plus thousand. The year before was, well, it's about the same. The year before was only 50,000. We've had 100, I mean, 1,000 walkers. So in, to show our appreciation, we are making Mayor Rockenberg an honorary chair. So here's your thank official you. Making Strides thank pin. Thank you and we thank much. you very much. Thank you. Oh, thank and you. Um, thank you. The yeah, next person I'd like to bring up real quick, I won't be long, is um, Nancy O'Brien. She, she, Nancy, has been phenomenal. Her husband is Dr. Mike O'Brien, who's our wonderful vet here in town. Um, both of their families have been touched very personally with breast cancer. And Nancy has donated her time and the materials for this quilt and um, Mayor Rockenberg has been very supportive that he's allowing us to display it in Town Hall. Um, all the proceeds from the quilt is going to the Making Strides. And because Nancy didn't charge us for the materials or the labor to make this gorgeous quilt, um, more proceeds are going to the walk. So if you're interested in tickets, you can contact myself or um, and you can get my information from Town Hall or from Nancy at Dr. So did, did Nancy make that, or a whole bunch of people make no, it? she made it all by herself. That is That's impressive. Great. That, I mean, I mean, maybe you can't all see the sewing detail in there, but that is really nice. This is, if you feel It's very detailed. Yes. Um, the, the inside of it it's outside, it's all fleece, it's all, it's just... It, it is, it's very, I mean, that's a lot of detail work. if you go by their house on Park Avenue, she has a quilt every month for whatever the season is. So I appreciate it. We should make lots of money. But if everybody wants to okay. donate $5,000 to get this, <laughs> <laughs> or tickets are $10 each or three for 20 um, The last thing. Yeah, before you walk away, oh. uh, let me hand over first. We've been selling tickets at the Animal Health Center. And we've raised 1225 so far for tickets <laughs> from Animal Health Center clients. The other per people who've been incredibly <coughs> supportive is um, Memories Charcoal House. They are donating on the, the August 16th is our kickoff. Before, we've always had to pay for the venue. We've had to pay for the food. They're donating all the food for the kickoff and the venue, which means there's more money that's not being put into overhead. That's Memories Charcoal House, Charcoal and they're House. located off Ridgeville Boulevard? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. And um, then the other one last thing about Memories is that um, starting September 1st through October 19th, they've created this martini. And um, proceeds from the martini is going to the Making Strides, and it's officially called a tatatini. And then the day of the walk, on top of everything they've done, they're giving us 10% of all their sales that day wow. to the walk. So they That's have great. been tremendously yeah. supportive. Yeah. So I appreciate, thank you giving me the time to talk. And um, I really hope you all can make the walk on the 19th of October. Thank Teresa, you. Teresa, thank you for all you do and all, I mean, it's just fantastic. These walks are always successful. Please look at the open halls. Terry is done with the walls, so decide where you'd like that to go. So we've got someone else. Welcome. Hi, hello. Hello. <laughs> um, my name is Ms. Felder, and I'm actually the center director for Victory Tutoring and Enrichment Center located here in Mount Airy. And I am coming today to um, submit a proposal um, I know that the council has been working on a teen center. We've been talking about community centers, so on and so forth. And um, 
It's my pleasure today to, to present a potential problem solver for the teen center aspect of the community center. Um, so we're proposing uh, that we would um, be the ones to sponsor the teen center on Friday nights for three hours um, and to resume it. Uh, we know that the council did a lot to initiate that as early as 2008. Uh, Reed did it in 2010 and again in 2012 and so on and so forth. And we know that the teens of this um, town are still looking for an outlet um, for social interaction and for other um, activities that they can participate in. Uh, the problems that have been presented prior to now are basically the permanency of the venue and the ability to offer consistent um, dates for the teen center to take place. And so we're proposing that um, with, in conjunction with the council, if it is approved that we would be the actual location um, for that teen center. Um, and we believe that that would resolve a lot of the issues and that would also provide an interim solution um, until there is a developed community center and or teen center um, in the future. So we just wanted to submit this for uh, consideration by the council and we appreciate your consideration. Thanks, fantastic. Just one thing, I, I don't think the rest of us had very much involvement in the teen center. That would be that the, was mayor. the mayor. Mm -hmm. the That's mayor was it's fine, it's fine. They didn't stop me. <laughs> well, we know that it's a part of your heart, and you know our model is what about the children? <laughs> so um, yeah, I think it's I think it's great. Council has always been supportive mm -hmm. of any outreach we've done in the community, so it was appropriate that you said that. But thank you for the kudos. I would like to review this. I know Councilman Everidge and Mary Beth Rook, who is on the Community Center Task Force, and met with you. Yes, we met. I'm looking forward to looking over this. What a great opportunity! Awesome. Thanks to private industry for bringing this forward. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate thank it. You. Anyone else? All right, let's move on to ordinances and resolutions. First up, we've got a budget amendment, uh, inflow and infiltration project. This was just something that we had in 14, and we're not going to actually get to it until 15, if I understand correctly. Marty, that's probably, I don't know if that's you or Charlene. It's, a, it's, a, it's not an engineering thing at this point. Is it a budget issue? I'll just describe, um, we have, um, I think, 80,000 one year and 70,000 the other year. Um, we need about 150,000 to do all the manholes that we had um, highlighted in the last INI study. And um, so we need it both years. And we try to get it started in June, and where we could just you know carry on into July, but they're not getting started until July. So it was best that we just move, move everything over into uh, the new year. So that's right. the budget amendment. Well, I will move. I'll, move. I'll, I'll make up. I'll, I'll make you want to make motion. it? Yes. Bob's going to move it. I will second. Any discussion on this? It's really just a shift this, from here to here. This I and I has been a real problem. I'm, I'm flipping through here trying to find a chart that I was showing Chris earlier, where there's several there's there's several months out of this year where we've had a lot of rain, where our wastewater treatment plant has been almost at the max. It's it's been within what 100,000 gallons of of. 1.8 1, 1. and we're allowed, no, I'm sorry, 1.18 right. and we're allowed 1.2. 1. 1. Although that's so, a, is that a yearly average or something? Yeah, no. it is based so, on a yearly average. So it's average. approaching our, 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 our average right. max. Right, so we're, the I&I &I is becoming a real issue with, you know, stormwater getting into the wastewater treatment plant. Yeah, the more you have to treat, the more it costs. Right. And that's money that people aren't paying for on the other end, so. Well, the other perspective is, while we're busy trying to find more water, if we don't solve the INI problem, we don't have any more room for right. additional more water, water right, into the system. So if you, you, you plug it up with water that we don't need to plug it up with. All right. Uh, this is cleaning water. Yeah. Unless there's any more discussion, uh, all in favor of Ordinance 2014 13. That's a, a, a oh, question. Go um, ahead. It's down here, part of the resolution is. It, it, Barney's got down here an emergency measure. D does this rise to the level of an emergency measure? I don't think it does. So I put that in there just in case that would be okay to do All so right. that they could get started. If not, it's just introduced tonight and it gets And we can do it next month. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Councilman Everidge is asking do we need to move right now. Is that true? Yeah, I mean. What's the urgency? Uh, 
uh, for an emergency vote. Well, he says he wants well, to get it started in July. Well, right now we do have the current year, the New Year's amount that we can get started with. Oh. It's just whether we'll exceed that before the end of, or before the next council meeting, um, whether we have to stop them. From, you know, but we can, we can plan accordingly. What do you need, a four-fifths vote? We need, well, we would need four. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, the emergency, it, I don't think it rises to the, an emergency. I just don't want to set a precedent. I, I'm for the motion. I right. just don't believe it rises. Well, to guys, any, any discussion on that? I mean, do you think you're going to burn through and need another 125K in 30 days? Well, it'll be about 80K. If we exceed well, 80K, then we'll... Right now you're saying that you want an extra 125,000. Right, that's what's in the... Last year's budget, right? And I think the current budget only has 80. 80 so split into two years, yeah, 125 no, and 80. So, so do you think you're going to burn through 80K in 30 days? Uh, it's possible, but if you want to wait, we'll just plan the schedule accordingly. What's the downsides if you do? Uh, we just push it back a week. So we're headed we're literally in convening in another three weeks. Yep. Yeah, I, I, you know, Bob, you I, moved it, so you want to well, withdraw I, it, just leave it for introduction? You know, I would, I, would, I would love to see it move forward as an emergency measure, but I'm, I'm with Chris. You know, there's, there's several items that, that were good items that I've canned voting for before because of the emergency status and setting a precedent. All right, so you want to just uh, introduce 2014-13 then? I'm going to draw your motion? Right. Okay. I'll just, I'll I'll just I will second... It. I will second his introduction of this. It'll be on next year's next next month's next agenda. year's. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's on. Got that, Lisa? Uh, I know we, we we do things very confusing. So. I'm with you. All right. We've also uh, next up we've got the sign ordinance for introduction. Uh, this is ordinance 2014-14. So I'll I'll introduce it with an uh, explanation. So, I mean, I'll introduce ordinance 2014-14. I will second the introduction. Okay, background on the ordinance, and then, Pat, don't go away, because I want to ask you a question on this yes, one. Um, we all know that during the recent election season, there was a controversy that was generated. Uh, there was some press coverage about it, discussing our signed ordinance and um, the fact that certain candidates had had signs that weren't in compliance. We have a complete rewrite of the signed ordinance on deck, but due to staff constraints, they're busy doing the master plan. Right. So we pushed off the re complete rewrite of the signed ordinance because staff simply doesn't have the time to prepare for that right now. They're trying to get the master plan out. The reason why I brought this one forward, though, is we had a controversy during the election season. Um, our town attorney, um, his opinion, Tom, correct me if I'm wrong, says arguably the signed ordinance is unconstitutional, arguably. The part of the signed ordinance that limits the time. Yes, that's correct. However, we, according to our town attorney, I'm paraphrasing him, but he'll smack me if I'm wrong, well, he'll correct me if I'm wrong, but we are allowed to regulate the, the, the size. So, um, Chairman Butts of the Planning Commission was kind enough to bring this forth to the planning with very little notice. Planning looked at it, and what you have before you was approved by planning. So what it does is it eliminates, A, the time restrictions, because we should not be in the business for regulating political speech, and arguably it's unconstitutional. B, it strikes the fact that you have to register your political campaign sign with your name and address because I don't know why we would ask somebody to put a sign up in their yard for political purposes and then show up at town hall and give their name and address. I'm just not sure what we do at the information why we want to do that. So it strikes that and then what it does is it allows larger signs really based on the size of construction in commercial and industrial areas. So that, that, that's the basis of it's here. Now because the controversy is still pending, and Bob, I'll look to you, I, I, wanna, I want to see if we'll consider this one as an emergency, only for the following reason. There's currently enforcement actions ongoing. Enforcement actions and the signs are still in place. It is in true, sir. Place. That is true. Right. So 
I mean, the enforcement actions, if carried through to the logical conclusion, is going to penalize people after the primary. I, I don't know what purpose it would serve to penalize property owners when we have well, a We're in the middle of an election cycle still. Still. Right. The primary's over, but. Yeah. Right. So, um, so, so I'll introduce it. I'll ask the council to consider pass if it would pass it as an emergency, clearing up the problem we have with current signs, with the current election cycle. And really, at that point, I'll suggest to the mayor, since the, if the council passes this, the current enforcement actions, I would ask the mayor to use some discretion and negate the current enforcement actions. Why were we, because what we're doing is penalizing people, and I don't see the gain to penalize people for political speech. Well, assuming they comply with the new requirements. Thank you. I mean, if they're still over the new requirements, you know, then you, you may want to go forward Agreed. with the enforcement I, I totally agree. So be, before I amend my motion to make an, an emergency ordinance, uh, is there consensus in the council for such an action? If there's not, I won't. Um, uh, Pat, is there any way that you, as the enforcement arm in the town, is there any way that you can just ignore, or do you, do you simply have to, do you have to? Actually, we learned this at MML. Again, one of the value of MML classes, I specifically asked this question. Municipalities do have the discretion to enforce or not to enforce. Mm -hmm. It's always been my policy to enforce. I've sent warning letters, and I've started the first step of what is a multi-step process with everybody who's in violation. I want to thank those that voluntarily pulled their signs down. Uh, and my enforcement continues to this day, unless you, of course, change the law, and at that point, my enforcement actions would have to cease. It makes no sense to uh, to follow up on an old law. Right, I understand. So my concern is, I mean, if we pass it as emergency, then I would suggest we're not going to force the mayor to penalize property owners right. for an ordinance that part of it arguably is unconstitutional to begin with. Scott's up next. So I think part of the issue I have with this is we're changing the sign size. Right even when we haven't had an ordinance or done an assessment. I understand planning looked at it in a snap judgment and said, let's do this because we have actions facing the town, but to increase the size arbitrarily without looking at the study. I mean, just quickly looking up what the average is for signs, we're already increasing just the political signs alone that we use uh, by three foot by two foot to get six square feet. That's not a political sign. We normally have 24 by 18. So we're increasing the size just for the little political signs that we use, which right. would open up the signs for all advertising that anybody does in the town. No, actually, Scott, let me correct you in that. First of all, the reason the sign, the 32 square feet, was chosen is standard construction, four by eight. Four by eight. I four understand by eight you're, doing, you're doing a four so by eight. the standard large sign is 32 square feet. I'm talking the small one. The small one doesn't change. So that's always been two by three. does not change so I, yeah, that's always the size been two of the three. small yeah. signs in neighborhoods. We've just never used the two by three signs because we can't afford them. That's what we use. You're right. We do use that. Scott, the other point is we use the cheap ones. But the other point is, I mean, we can sit here and beat to death all day. Whether it's seven inches or eight inches or ten inches, what's the relevance? The point here is the standard construction, construction. The standard construction. The next size up is those bigger ones. Right. And, the bigger ones. And the bigger, more expensive campaigns with money want to put those up. And this only allows them, which I like about this, in the industrial and commercial district, you're right. still not going to see a 32-square-foot sign in residential district. Right. They are still, you have not changed that, to my That's knowledge. Correct. It's It's two by three. But it also just, just says in a residential district where commercial it, use is allow, authorized by the Board of Appeals, meaning the Board of Appeals could say, sure, you can put this sign on the corner. As, uh, no, no, sorry. As, That's what it says as it's well, currently she written. Said she'd never do it. <laughs> well, I know she says she would do it, but it says Board of Appeals has the right no, to no, authorize. No, no. No, no. It's, it's saying that the Board of Appeals, something that the Board of Appeals has already, if there's has a, already approved, as a, as a special exception. community commercial in the residential area, they can put this, the larger sign there. Not that I can approve it just to put the sign So there. great. I understand that's not the words that are written here. It no, says property in a residential district where commercial use is authorized. Doesn't say anything about that it's... Well, what's that's referring to, that's Scott? Saying. The intent is that if you have a piece of property that is in a residential district, but its use is commercial by virtue of having received a special exception, mm -hmm. or it could be a non-conforming use. Okay. Then, in that instance, a 
a square foot sign on that property would be permitted as right. this is currently written. So you could have a 32 foot square, I'm sorry, 32 square foot uh, sign in a residential proper uh, That's district. That's been given an exception for non-conforming use. <coughs> right, which is the way I understand Or a special <coughs> exception. Special exception. Which good, the Board of Appeals good, good would discussion. get. Good discussion, good clarification. <coughs> so let me get back to, and just a reminder for the council, when we do the complete rewrite of the side and ordinance, this will get visited. This is merely trying to solve a problem that exists issue. right now. For the next few months while we're in election cycle till November. So if signs right. are already in place or in discussion, then that would not affect them because effectively their grandfather would be for passing this, correct? If they're in place and they comply with this, they would be. You can't to pass stay. a law if the sign's already in place, no, but and hold somebody accountable. They're grandfathered. Well, they're, they would already be in violation. They're in violation now. This might allow some of them to become this, legit. You, you're thinking of the instance where you have something that is currently present that's legal, and then subsequent to that, by virtue of a subsequent act, mm -hmm. you make something illegal. This does the reverse, First. actually. Okay. I just want to make sure we yeah, aren't taking will, away take somebody's some signs, rights. This will take some signs that are illegal and now make them legal. Okay. So, again, before I, I'll amend my motion, but I'm just looking for a consensus, consensus before I do it. If the council will consider an emergency. This makes an emergency sense to me only because of the issue okay. that there's pending, there's pending penalties and we're in an election cycle. And we're going to have a lot more pen so, penalties. Okay, yeah. so it's going to be ramping up in the next few months. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, amend my, I'll amend my motion. I'm introducing Ordinance 2014-14 as an emergency as an emergency ordinance. Okay, Tom, should we do this as two votes, one on whether it's an emergency motion? One? I think that's better okay. practice. I will, I will second that. I was thinking that way. So I will second that. This vote is only on whether or not our next vote on this is as an emergency measure. Start over there. Sorry, which one's, <laughs> which, one, which one's first, the ordinance or the emergency? The emergency measure. Thank you. Now, what's, have, the, what's the difference if it's emergency or not emergency? Uh, the difference is uh, it, typically when it's an ordinance, uh, we can introduce it tonight and we have to vote on it next month. So why, why can't we do that? Well, the reason we don't want to vote on next month is because it, it deals with political issues. It's and a pending this is, issue. And there are pen, there's, there's pending penalties and citations. 30 days could make a difference in this case. They're trying, well, they're the trying thing to is, if people come in and broke the law, now we're saying, okay, forget about it. Well, can, to uh, some uh, extent, uh, yes. It, it can, and right? it's true, but, but, and that's true. But, but in this case, in this case, they, they broke the law. I get that. As I was explained, part of this ordinance is clear, arguably unconstitutional to begin with the time limit. And second of all, this is political speech. That's different. Okay, we shouldn't be... I don't think we should be in the business of regulating political speech like this. So if we don't pass it as an emergency, then the mayor's going to be forced to find people who have large signs out there who are trying to put out their political beliefs. And to me, that, that, that falls into a different category. That, that, that's all. But there's a motion on for it. So the question I'll ask before and we're, and we're just, That's what we're discussing, yeah. whether be, or not we should do this before emergency vote, so or wait a month. We're saying the time limit is unconstitutional? Uh, to, to clarify, there is some case law from courts lower than the United States Supreme Court that have held that durational limitations are for the time that you can't put up signs a complete ban on speech and therefore violative of the First Amendment. However, size regulations fall into a different category and several of those cases make, take pains to say that because it's not a complete ban on speech for a period of time simply a regulation on the, the size, if you will, of your speech. And those, the courts have commented, are probably constitutional. So I understand the size and the time, but which, to clarify, you stated that time might be considered con unconstitutional, but it's not definite. And but that size, we can control we can that. I understand that, but right. we're saying let's make it bigger. Right. So we're saying we're, the two issues are let's make signs bigger just because it's convenient. Well, that will be the next issue. The first issue is whether or not we deal with this as an emergency measure, which is we deal with it tonight. And if that fails, then it will be introduced and we'll deal with it next month. Next month it will need three votes to pass. Tonight it would need four votes to pass. Right. Sorry. My point, Scott, is why, and I'll use the vernacular, why are we hell-bent 
on regulating political speech and arguing over the size of signs. I mean, if you drive around the standard sign along an industrial commercial area along a highway, it's approximately this side based on construction costs, right? And it's a First, it's a first Amendment political speech issue. So why are we hell-bent on the size? So, and again, Ken, to your point, the only reason why I'm trying to get it through as an emergency mm -hmm. is so the mayor is not forced to start finding property owners. And if the mayor were to find these property owners, what do we gain? So What are we gaining by that? So the thing I'll end up Go saying ahead. in response, because you asked a question, is that what do we get out of constraining size? We get the fact that do we want to end up having a town full of billboards, right, where there's tons of advertisement driving down the road, everybody sees it, or do we want to keep the small char town charm well, that we had where so the size is smaller, it's more consistent. Political speech we is don't, a different. This is a political we're side not out of everything side. I understand, but we're not blocking the speech. They can still speak. Mm -hmm. True. Okay, we True. did not block their speech at all. They could end up having a 24 by 18 inch sign. Hey, you're speaking. We controlled the size. Didn't do the time. And we do. And the question is, do we want but to increase that? But to go that? bigger just because, I guess the argument back is, why are we going bigger? We're going bigger because the candidates, candidates want to get their message out. Some candidates claim they have longer names, so they need a larger sign. They want to put their bullet points. They want to put their message. And as folks are driving up and down a large, a large highway, Route 27, then it's easy for people to recognize the candidate in their message. Yeah, and so I think it's important clarification to make, if I may. Uh, and Council, I don't want to get wrecked. Certainly. If I may, an important distinction to make, it is an industrial and commercial zone. We are not changing anything in your re residential zone. You also have Mills Farm, which has no limitations or are subject to county limitations, but are probably far more liberal than the town's limitations. So you could have four by eight signs there, but right across the street you cannot. Well, you still couldn't cross the street because it's well, I can, but Well, technically, <laughs> technically. So as humorous as that was, the point is, right. you know, right up the street a little bit, you can still do it. Rick, you're, you're up. Okay. It is working. Okay. I told them not to do that. I told them to keep it off. <laughs> you I really don't need it. I think everybody in the room got to hear it. Yeah, but the people on TV need to. We need it. Okay. I tired greatly. Hearing the word now, arguably unconstitutional. The councilman started stating it was absolutely unconstitutional. With a certain county commissioner's assistant, the councilman is now using the term arguably unconstitutional. We are not restricting speech. As I told one of the county councilmen who was involved with this, he can put, and he sort of chuckled about this, but he can put up 48 three by two signs, and he can. Talking about Route 27 that the mayor just mentioned. If you've got one there, and this person did, why do you have what have one on the west side of 27 at the Watersville intersection. It's big enough. But constitutional or unconstitutional, we need to get off that argument because anybody can say anything they want to. We're only reducing the size of the sign. And one parallel that I drew to a county commissioner was, you can get out there and stand in the middle of town and shout as loud as you want, but there is a decibel level that is regulated by law. It's called noise pollution above a certain It's point. a Comar level, that's Rick, correct. So Rick, we've got the you're, same thing with signs. You're correct. The only question that's really going on here is whether or not we want to allow well, know, the sign pollution to get a little, no, to let the sign pollution get a little bigger. Yeah. And, and um, our trusty town clerk, Debbie, is obviously watching this meeting from home. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Debbie. Because <laughs> she just texted me. <laughs> and so uh, she said, remember, if next month, not as an emergency, it won't go into effect until 20 days after it's adopted. So she's letting us know that. Which should be um, 50 days. Right. right, which would be about 50 days from now, which is getting much closer to, so, so it's stretching the time frame out further. Well, my feeling is if we're not she's breaking the Constitution, from the great beyond. which I don't think that we are, another 30, 60 days, big deal. Okay. okay. Thanks, Thank Rick. You. Thanks, Rick. All right. Um.
Well, this is a vote as to whether we're going to just introduce, whether we're going to deal with it as an emergency ordinance. Uh, all in favor of dealing with this as an emergency ordinance tonight, say aye. 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 Okay, we got three. All opposed. Aye. Two with one abstention. Okay, Tom. Need four votes according to the uh, to pass as an emergency. And okay, and the abstention would not do it. Okay, so the, so you're introducing the, this. Right. So so I'll go ahead and introduce it as a regular ordinance, and then for the council's okay. perspective, they've now forced the mayor. Just want the council to be comfortable with this. We have now forced the mayor to go out to certain property owners and find them. Those property owners are responsible for paying fines to the town. I don't know what good or purpose that will serve other than anger some property owners and put the mayor in an uncomfortable position. So I guess to be clear, the mayor has the right to enforce or not as that is his side of the house. Correct. That is not forcing him to do it, to be clear, Councilman. Right. I, I, am, I am, if I could, I am compelled to do so, Councilman Everton. Your point, both your points are correct. I am compelled to do so. Could I ask before this issue closes, uh, could I get a consensus from the Council, uh, your position on this going into next month, because it's going to help me with some enforcement. Oh, right, because if you see that it's got the three votes It's going to help me with enforcement in the next 30 days if I could poll the Council. Uh, Has Mr. Mr. Average made the motion? Uh, he, he, well, he's moved that we introduce I it. I will second it's, the introduction. It's, it's, I, will, so I will second it. I will okay. second okay. it. I just, I have problems with that word emergency. emergency. Okay, so that aside, I'd like to ask the council members quickly if with the council. I, I, I would certainly lean towards support of it. Your support? I Definitely. And I was council impressed. support. So that, that well, wait a minute. You don't know if I, yeah, I'll support <laughs> <laughs> well, so, it. So, it, so yes. it appears it would. Council it appears it would. strong. I need to read more. Yeah. It, but it's it does good. appear it has three votes for next it's month. Good. And I certainly, I support Councilman Strong. I support this ordinance, but I also support Councilman Strong's position. We want to be careful what we allow and what we become. But I do support this for some temporary reasons. These are temporary signs. All right. Up next, Resolution 2014-3. For introduction, the Carroll County Hazard Mitigation Plan. Um, I was curious why this is coming in as, a, as number three. I guess it's the third resolution. It is. I thought there we were, were further resolutions water. in this. Okay. There are two okay. long. Well, these are, again, are resolutions, not ordinances. And the charter resolutions are kept separately in terms of numbers. As numbers. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, well, it's just listed as being here for introduction tonight. Uh, I will introduce. Do we have a second? Second, second. from Ken. I th I th actually, I we could think Monica. Vote you can vote on it. I think Monica. Hold on, what is this? What is this? The hazard. The hazard. Uh, the hazard. Uh, no, I, 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 don't, I, don't, is don't there, I don't think there is an urgency okay. here. Okay. I wasn't sure. And if it is, we're not going to get an emergency vote tonight. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, 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 as a resolution, it only needs three. This says something that goes to okay. FEMA. Yeah, I mean, we, we, just FEMA, FEMA. we just received FEMA. We just received FEMA funding. Uh, but on this that note, there is some required training of the mayor and council for emergency reimbursements, and we'll have to send that back out. We all do have to be certified at certain levels to receive some reimbursements, so I'm going to send that back out and encourage all the council members to take that training. Staff is taken. All right, resolution 2014-4, community legacy. That's authorization for a community legacy grant, and I think this largely is to. Give you the authority to sign them, isn't it? Um, we can deal with this one tonight. Who was heading this one up? Was this one? That's me, Peter. There you go. Okay, Melissa. One thing um, about this, I didn't realize that typically we introduce resolutions before. No, we don't have so to. You don't have to. No, resolutions are often are usually actually they're usually dealt with that night. Okay. It's different different thing. Uh, so this one is for um, the support of the Mount Airy Downtown Facade Program, uh, partnering with MAMSA on this. And um, this was actually established in 2005, and it's something uh, we apply for, have to apply for each year uh, for an amount for the program. And then what, if the program is awarded funds under Community Legacy, it is then um, the job of the program heads the town, myself, and MAMSA representatives to be the committee members and to disperse the money to the downtown businesses for facade improvements. Um, so things to point out in the uh, resolution, I wanted to make note of the, the paragraph starting with, now therefore be it resolved 
um, because Councilman Phoebus actually came into the office and had a, a few things he brought up to me. Um, near the end, it, it mentions a grant or a loan uh, up to the amount of 60000 And um, to clarify, and maybe we can take out the or loan part of it because it, I'm simply applying for the grant. And the grant is, is actually due next Tuesday. And I could file an extension for the resolution, but they do re require this. Um, and I spoke with the program administrator with the state, and she actually um, suggested that these grants typically for these programs are in the $50,000 range, Councilor Phoebus. So we're not far off our mark by saying up to $60,000. And it's a grant for a period of two years. The funds have to be expended by then. And um, the other point is that um, typically the highest executive officer, you would make the legal entity official, as we've stated here um, in the second to last paragraph, and so that he can sign the documents, the legal documents that are associated with the grant. We've seen these every few years. In order for MAMSA to apply for grants, they have to know that the town council <coughs> wants them to apply for grants, essentially. Um, Bob? What, what types of, what types of um, projects would these grants Well, this is all facade for? improvements, isn't it? This is all facade? All facade improvements to businesses that are down here on the board, well, or anything really right. that's down here on the main and street. And I think the only thing they said they were going to strike is just the or loan part. Right, right. So right. applying so for a grant, free. that's... Right. You know, yeah, like, yes, it's they money. want the right to apply for free money. Yeah, free money. Uh, Pat? Is there a reason why we're limiting the amount to sixty thousand? If we get a grant greater than that, or she said that they're only for fifty. They're only for fifty. She said they're typically for fifty, the average. Is there a reason that we would limit ourselves to anything? Why would you have any amount lower than what you could get? Let's why? Put, let's what? put a million in. Well, don't put any amount. I just don't why we'd limit ourselves. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm curious and if I'm they require sure so the minimum is at this. Well, what the maximum is. What the maximum I'm wondering. But from a legal perspective, Tom, if you were writing a contract for a client, would you limit your client yeah. unnecessarily? Well, this is the state. This no. is a different <laughs> thing. See, so different. Hey, I think you. But I, I don't know. This is probably a resolution that came from the state. The state. Oh, is this a by form recommendation? That they sent you? I, I, would I based gather. my, I edited theirs basically to make yeah. it special to us. So, so I would expect well, then no. Well, no. To clarify, now let's not try to recreate what's actually happened. Did they have this number in their amount, or did you add it? I'll have to find that out for you. You don't know if you added it or not? I know there are two businesses at this time that are interested in this, and it'll be open to all of them. But I, like, half of me thinks that No, it's it fine. Well, I'm trying to get back to the, the amount. Is that the amount that came from the state? I is this a boilerplate? I suspect the issue is that the only two businesses that are applying for grant easily fall within this sixty thousand number. So, the, but it comes down to: is there any harm in striking? Where we struck the word loan, is there any harm in striking the rest of it up to the amount of? Just all they can do is boot it back to you, and then you just you know. Well, I would guess. So, put like a hundred thousand dollars. Just don't put anything. Is what they're saying for yeah. grant. Years. Period. They're just saying, Melissa, just don't put a dollar amount. That mean that opens up you can get a grant for anything. Within their limitations. Right. Within their limitations. Um, there's a typo in here. In the form Melissa, for a grant should be of. I, Jennifer Almond with the state, she recommended that we did have an amount. That I would say that's a difference. I know, okay. but I'm, I'm trying to think what that would be, and that's a big deal. Okay. Um, you got, you got, you got. The crowd is going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I've been there. Uh, why would you want to give them this discretion to give you less, like a thousand dollars? Well, but well, it well, sounds like strike the state it. people actually recommended that we have a number in there. And it says up to the amount. Yeah. Yeah, we wouldn't. So they could give us. Them. They could give us a thousand because it says up to. Like, you give them discretion to say five hundred. I don't think so. They could give so. us five hundred now, though, if yeah, you read it. I, I know. I know what you're saying. Dick's been at this a long time. Yeah, let me just clarify. First of all, please. What the town has done in the past is they passed a resolution endorsing the uh, application for a facade grant, which in the past has always been done by the Mountain Main Street Association through the uh, Community Fund of Carroll County. When they changed the law, the state combined 
facade grants and other stuff into this umbrella of legacy grants. And that just really changed the administration. Uh, so this is the first time actually we're going through this under uh, this process. As far as the, the amount of money, I, I would agree. I, I think you've got to put an amount of money. I mean, you're going to send a grant request in and say, by the way, I'd like some money. And they're going to say, what? So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, if 60000 is probably a reasonable amount for what could be anticipated of uh, some of the building owners' interest in uh, revitalizing or restoring their facades downtown. But you can apply every cycle of the legacy grant process for additional funds. And just to point out that actually the grants that were given under MAMSA was a grant for a certain amount, an amendment for another amount, when we stepped forward and we said, well, we have this other interest, and in order to fill that interest, we need an extra 100 grand or whatever it was. So um, I would suggest, number one, use 60,000. Number two, make sure you put a number in there. And um, the biggest question we're going to have later because of the change is going to be this committee is going to administer the grant and how that's set up between uh, MAMSA and the town and the authority to, to spend money and commit money during the administration of the grant process and also to administer the grant or be the liaison back to the Department of uh, Housing and Community Development, which by the way, by coincidence, I have a, a conference call with them tomorrow about final closeout of the previous grant processes. So there's a whole big cycle here uh, my suggestion is pass what you've got and, and move forward. So just typo, not the dollar amount. Was the in the form of, not in the form or? I got, I got you, Scott. In the form yeah. of a grant up to the amount of $60,000. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. I'd written the same just thing just want to make sure it was right. Okay. Yeah, form, form of a grant up to 60000 cross that line. Okay, I will propose... I'll move that we accept resolution 2014-4 with the with the changes that in the right. very first in the very first <laughs> now paragraph uh, the last Just part of it be changed to read in the form of a grant, comma. Well, actually, I guess it's, it's, is that a semicolon there? It's a comma I believe. Comma up to the amount of sixty thousand dollars. I'll second. Got a second from Bob. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chris, was that nine from you? Aye. That was nine from everybody. Good job, Melissa. Thanks, Melissa. Thank you, Dad. Unfinished business. Extension of water services to Socorro. Are we skipping? Oh. Okay, uh, last time. Did I miss, did I miss one? Are we Just skipping one. the charter amendment resolution? Oh. Yep. 2014-2? There was a new, you're missing the new agenda, Peter. Well, I know I have two here, and I'm okay. trying to read between the two. So Not the one that's colored. That's, that one. Yeah, that's the new one. I'm get. sorry. I have two copies, and they're a little different. I'm just, I guess <laughs> I'm working. The highlighted one's bad. You have a working copy and a this, copy copy? This is the one that was at my desk tonight, though. This you is the one crossed that's it out. This is the one that was here tonight. Right. C-E. This one with my notes on the back is the one that I had in my box. So look at E. So I thought that one today. You should have a C on it. That's okay. <laughs> I thought the one I had that, that was sitting here tonight was the more up-to-date one, but the one I had in my packet was more yeah. up-to-date. They like to keep it fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, moving along. So uh, we got, Chris, you've got the, your, um, yeah, I'll go ahead and your charter amendment. I'll introduce, <laughs> I'll introduce charter amendment resolution 2014-2 with the following changes to the text in front of you. Change number one, page two, section two, subsection B, subsection one, subsection D, in other words, down at the bottom, the signatures of at least, change that to 30%. 30% of the registered voters. Next change. Last paragraph, page two. Upon receiving a recall petition, the clerk shall strike the words, review the petition's contents, and replace that with deliver. So here it reads now. Upon receiving a recall petition, the town clerk shall deliver within seven days. Last change, 
page 3, section C, special public hearing, subsection 2, last paragraph on page 3. Second sentence from the bottom, it reads, which shall not be less than 30 days nor more than 60 days. Strike that, replace it with, which shall not be less than 120 days from the date of the special public meeting. 120, yeah, okay. correct. And those are late changes that, that I received by comment. So um, before I get to um, the, the rest of suggested changes and discussion, rationale behind this, um, the previous council meeting, we introduced and passed an ordinance for recall with cause. Um, the reason why I have introduced this, A, Councilman Strong suggested, hey, let's pass the what we have before us for simplicity. And Councilman Strong suggested if I felt strongly enough, I should come back with an amendment for recall without cause. Now, a little bit of history. In prior council discussions, I heard things like, well, if uh, a ci if citizens go around telling lies about you and they can kick you out of office, well, that's wrong. I heard a comment, actually, and I, I know it was facetious. Uh, if they don't like the color of your tie, so that's why I wore a tie like this and passed it tonight. You did um, good. You did good, by the way. The, the, the point, the reason why I introduced this without cause is it, it, it's my firm belief that this council and the mayor serve at the beck and calling of the citizens. If the citizens decide whatever reason they have, they want you out, whether they didn't get what they bought, they don't like the color of your tie, it doesn't matter. If the citizens want to recall you for whatever reason, then they should have the right and the privilege to do that. And it's not even a privilege, they should have the right to do that. And I really feel strongly at this because no elected officials should cling to power if a petition shows up and they want you gone. It's pretty simple. So that's why we're, I guess I'm looking for a second. I'll second. Um, do, you, do you have questions, Scott? Was that a pen up? I was just going to give a minor editorial change since Councilman Everich was making changes. Uh, page 205, number 3, he struck and put deliver within seven days of receipt. You need to remove forward because it doesn't make sense grammatically. Okay, yeah. Um, the only other question Sorry, I would ask. Sorry, which, which change, Scott? 205, bottom. Uh, so it would be C513B3. Yep, I accept that. All right, so I accept that as a change. Um, the only other comment I would have, and Tom, this would be for you because I know you kind of worked on some of this. Is there any duplicity between with cause and without cause for sections A, B, C, D, E for any of that text? And if so, can it be cleaned up so that there is a with or without cause section versus a cause section? And I feel that having the same thing said twice that's potentially the exact same text, there's no difference between a cause and without cause then. So you're suggesting blend them. What I'm suggesting is if there's commonality between the two, that section should be moved to its own common section, and then the differentiator or differentiators between the two. Right. So if you have a cause and without cause, as we're putting here, we shouldn't have the same thing duplicated twice, making the ordinance twice as long. To an engineer, that makes sense. In legislation, it doesn't. Well, I was going to say, yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> it was uh, just to be clear, the, uh, there is some du duplicity, some. Uh, and there are some elements to this that are different than what was passed, I think, last month. Um, for instance, in subsection A, I think you'll find that um, A2. The, the recall provision that was passed last um, last time did not include two. This we're, does we're include two, two because this seems more probably... Um, but it says Actually, with or without cause in there. Sorry, I'm sorry, Scott. Um, let me. I missed a change. Are you going to strike two as well? I okay. missed a change. Because the other ones were all on a list of changes I gave to Chris. So, so was that two was on striking two was on I, my list. Correct. So I saw it and figured we'd struck it before. <laughs> but so yeah. So the, I missed a change. So again, on page two, the first paragraph, which is subsection B, grounds for recall. Recall for cause, that entire section is struck. I'm sorry, which, where's this one? A2, C513, A2. A2. Well, well, the, on a, the, bottom the of double jeopardy one we want to get, we want to get rid of. Yes, um, 
Yeah, you're right, it is. Uh, it's a double jeopardy. It's with this one here. Well, that's part of what you passed last time. So, well, that's which one are you looking at? It's A2 right here. Yeah, it's A2 right I'm here. I'm looking at A2. About this um, here. Under 205, right in the middle. This is uh, so, section two of this ordinance yeah, is your right new here. part. So are you looking to strike that? Maybe you should see if this thing's going to pass before you rewrite it. Well, no, it's entered, so that's it. It's well, it's got a second. Next time. It's got a second, so okay. so it's at least up for discussion next time. Okay, yeah, that's that's right. Uh, that was Pete, your that, suggestion. Was I. My, quite, my, just, my suggestion was to strike that only because of a concern that it gives a free ride to somebody. Yeah. In other words, if you manage to get past a recall vote, no matter what crimes you commit, they can't, they can't right. then bring it back again. Right, so. throw you out. Right, so. I, I hope that will happen, but. So, so that was eliminated for the four-cause charter provision passed last time. Mm -hmm. If passed as is, this one without cause would have sort of the double jeopardy clause unless you all choose to strike it. So with or without cause is in there? Yeah, in other words, I think the intent is is that if you've survived one recall election, whether that recall election has been generated for cause or without cause, mm -hmm. then you're not subject again to a recall election without cause. Right. I want to but you could be subject to a recall with cause a second time within your term. Which basically means that somebody just can't get rid of you as Councilman Everidge is saying for whatever reason because you're elected that protects them then. So if they have a favorable thing they're then protected and have amnesty. Right, which is from why that point my forward. recommendation had been before that we strike it and my recommendation this time was that we strike it. Right, so and and but uh, Tom's point, if I'm missing it, is to say, no, it's different. It should be in here. It's Well, it's up to you all to say no, what it is. But just as, I'm just saying, as drafted, mm -hmm. this provision, um, this recall provision without cause does have this double jeopardy feature that the with cause that you passed last month does not. Right. So in this case, true. let's, I missed that change. My intent is to strike that section. Number so two. if we if we strike yeah, so two, it's, then it's C five dash thirteen subsection A. And A is essentially A is essentially the same. other one. So A is no different. Correct. I think so A then I would want to look at B, C, D, et cetera, for the next after the discussion to see what are the differences. Well, okay. we made a lot of changes this thing tonight. Uh, there's no way I'm going to vote for it. All these changes y'all making in this thing, I think it should be retyped, come back and study this thing a little yeah. more before we decide on this thing. I can't agree that the idea this evening. Is merely to introduce. I mean, we, we to introduce it should be retype, come back with the information y'all have before we're sitting here studying I this thing. Agree. It should have been done before we got here. Oh, uh, agreed. So just so so you, the flow, um, I there were some suggested changes given to me before this meeting. So those are in here now. Yeah, those, but they're so confusing. Those, at least for me, it is. The suggestions that. That Chris just made are suggestions. I had actually emailed. Right, them. I agree. I think, I'm not disputing what I, you're but saying. I think but he wants to see if anybody else has any more suggestions, and okay. then they can be incorporated into yeah. something final, and then they can come back. Because I've amended okay. my motion to include these changes, it will come. Yeah, the, the, the form you see potentially next time. Not right, the form you see okay. will be here next. So we're next saying, time. do you have? Do you guys have any changes? I emailed mine to Chris, and those were ones that he threw out. All right. So Scott's got a suggestion of combining them. Scott, my preference would be. Um, my, I mean, engineers think the same way. Reduce the requirements. From a legislative perspective, I'd rather this stand alone. That's fine. I still want my question answered. Is what is the discriminators between uh, cause and without well, cause? Well, we, we, Bruce. Bruce go. we we need to have this highlighted so that somebody, the layman looking at it, can understand. Oh, two, five, and seven are different. That's the only thing. Well, but but actually, kind of the nice thing is they're two whole completely separate things. So. As long as they're completely separate, there you don't have to. You only have to read this one independent. You don't have to try and mix the two. Understood. I, I'm asking for clarification on the four call or for the no cause. What are the discriminators that are changing now from what we just passed that said you don't? Okay. You have to have a cause. What, what are the distinctions between the two? Years? I want to know the ones that tie it to make it a no cause resolution, versus what we just voted on last time, which is you have to have a reason. All right, and well, just, just for the so, record. like, if we say 30% is the resident voter, just for example, sorry, Chris, yeah. is it 30% for cause? 
Was it 50 percent? Was it 25 percent? And if it differs, then I want to understand why are we changing the percentages? Those types of questions. Well, because there is no answer. cause in this. I mean, that's the big but discriminator. We, I understand. The, the only other thing I would point out along those same lines is that with the suggested changes that Councilman Everidge uh, went through on pages three, on page, uh, sorry, uh, 205, uh, uh, B3, and then C2, I lifted those initially directly from the, the provisions, and these deal with timing and, and procedure, from the 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 charter amendment you passed last month so if you were to I'd simply point this out that if you do adopt this one ultimately with these changes you are going to have one procedure one. for a without cause and mm -hmm. a different procedure and set of time limits for mm -hmm. a with cause and there that may make sense mm -hmm. I just want to point out to that right What's Mike and actually my point would be Scott the Charter amendment that we passed for cause should be there anyway. Because again, I don't, on, on principle, I don't believe the citizens need any reason to recall an elected official if they decide they want to get rid of that person. So my preference would be, but I'm not, just a preference, I'm not going to suggest we take action. No, I understand. So, you you made your. We pass this and we don't, yeah. and, we, we, and we eliminate the for cause. Because why do I have to go through a list? I want to get rid of the rascal for whatever. Bruce? Uh, as chairman of the Board of Election Supervisors, I, we were never formally asked to review them, and we may have a problem. I didn't pay close attention to the previous charter when it was approved. If the procedure is similar to what's in here, there is a couple of problems. One, this places the emphasis for the approval of the signatures solely on the chair. So you have one individual making decisions uh, reference the um, validity of the signatures. The second thing is it doesn't say business days, it just says days. So you could have someone like this past holiday bring this in on Thursday and we would have to deal with it over the three-day holiday. That would be the three days. It doesn't exclude weekends unless, that's a, 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 unless there are definitions associated uh, with the legislation that specifies what a day is. The other problem is you have a 14-day period to verify the signatures. We don't have in existence right now the list of eligible voters. We have to request it from the county, and it's dependent on how people register. So it's a dynamic document. So I'm not sure as to, uh, and Debbie's not here, what the time yes, frame is. is to get is. <laughs> to get that information back from the, text, so you know her yeah, from the respective counties. It usually takes them a while to bring that together. So that may be an issue also being able to get the official up-to-date voter registration as of that time. And then you'd have to specify what your cutoff date is. That, For that registration. That right. registration from that point on. Because if this came up, people could rush out and register to sign the petition. I mean, just theoretically, something like that could happen. Correct, you're so right. So we need to know it. We need a whole when, procedure for that. Because with the elections, we have a date that we seal the elections. You know, we seal yeah. the registration. I, I, I see what you mean exactly, because yeah. I remember yeah. going through that. Yeah. So, so Scott? I think uh, if we all recall, when we ended voting for cause, when we did that, we ended up saying the registered voters were the ones that ended up voting during that session for that individual. We, but we didn't, we didn't narrow it's not, it. But I don't think that's that. codified it's anywhere. It's not codified. So I, I, thought is, that, I thought that's we what we had the, stated. I don't think you can go back and get an old voter registration list. Yeah. I don't know. Keep do, we keep, do we keep the actual sheet? And also, technically, Scott, that doesn't guarantee that a person voted. Right. That gave the person the right to enter the voting booth. Yeah. They could choose not, not to, to vote. vote in the voting booth. And we have had discrepancies in the numbers. Right. And that's what we assume happens. That's a citizen's right. So you cannot actually say that those individuals voted. Can, uh, I, think Bob, I think Bob was next. I, this, is, this is the problem that I have with this. The last election garnered 6.57% mm -hmm. of the vote. Say Mr. Phoebus got elected and he was able to fire up his base and they got out and voted for him and everybody else stayed home. Okay, so Mr. Phoebus got... That's kind of what happened. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay now, now, all of a 
sudden, some individual that lives down the street from him doesn't like Mr. Phoebus, okay? And he can go out and get the people that did not even take the time, the effort to show up and vote on election day mm -hmm. and overturn his election. Yep. Because they're like, not constrained to the 6.5 now is what I just heard. But, 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 Bob, I understand, I understand that point. You done, Bruce? I just wanted to point out okay. that procedurally, good. You're right. we, will, we will, will have to look at that. Very good. good. And I would, like to, I would like the council to charge the Board of Elections right, to look at this question, and too. make a recommendation just as you do. With Guys, that sounds like a really like good that. idea. What do you think? Oh, yeah. Before it even goes any further. <laughs> Thank so, you, Bruce. For, just, good Bruce, point. just to elect, uh, I, I'm starting to go down the path where I'm going to with. I'm not withdrawing it yet, but I'm starting to go down the path now where I withdraw it to answer, because we're not going to do it here tonight, to answer some of these questions that you just put in. Mm -hmm. And that further drives us to the fact that we have a charter amendment we've already passed with some problems. That we now see. You're, I think you're see. correct. Yeah. So yeah, where I, were you last yeah. time? Yeah, I, uh, we need, I, to, we need I to tweak just didn't, the days. Then look at it, and Thank you. Uh, that, was, that was the issue. Yeah. Thank you. All right, well, I think, Bruce, I think everybody here is in agreement. We would like the Board of Elections to look at this and sort it so this and actually the one that's already been passed and come back with a recommendation clearly for the one that's already been passed mm -hmm. to make that something that can work in an election mm -hmm. scheme. Mm -hmm. Especially since it's not all what if the, the Board of Elections you know, chairs out of town or whatever? There's right, so well, I think, I think technically it, it, most of these things, it, it, it's them it's the chair or his designee. Right, and right. now it's the chair that signs, just as the mayor, for instance, signs right. on an annexation. Only three people. So. Yeah, I understood. <laughs> but it could yeah. be yeah. a volunteer. Also, I believe the last one was the town clerk that did most of the work when in the room, mm -hmm. uh, previous month. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I just wanted to comment that one thing you should think about is if you're going to limit the people that could vote for removal to the people who voted in the prior election. You've disenfranchised, in our case, 94% uh, per, of the mm -hmm. voting public. And I don't, tech, Tom, you might speak to this, but I don't think you could do that. No, I, 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 I don't think that's how that's that written. I think no, it's, I think it's, it's no, intended to be. Just a comment. My, my, right, my other comment for thinking yeah. do you, about. Dick, can I just, just say one hmm? thing, because I want to address that and Councilman King concern. If that's the way the vote goes, that's the way it goes. It's not for us as elected officials to worry about how many people come out, who if votes for what. that's the way the vote went in May, then it, that's the way the vote went in May. But, it, it but just, just for clarification, the, the, my ordinance is the voters. There's no precondition. All it's voters. All voters. All voters. It's all voters. Right. Right. It's all Absolutely. voters. Absolutely. Yeah. Correct. So it, it, I just, I mean, I, 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 I understand, understand your point, Bob, but, but that's not for us to decide as elected officials. It's up for the citizens to decide. We don't decide the elected, the citizens decide. They, they don't so vote. There is no, so there's no legal term of office now. They just, it, four years a, or whenever they throw you out. Well, that's, that's a different <laughs> issue, Bob. But go ahead. Uh, Dick. Like I said, but the, the main point I wanted to make for consideration. Whichever you, comes first. Whichever comes first. Uh, yeah. As you deliberate this, is the fact that uh, if, if you have a four cause, which as I recollect, says that that comes before the council and the council determines whether it met the criteria for cause. If you do that, you are now shifting the uh, ability of the electorate to recall somebody, and now you're doing a review process, and I would just suggest that it would be very risky on the part of the town council to overturn a request because you didn't believe there was enough for cause substantiation. And I think that in a process where you've gone out and had uh, registered voters come in with a petition for a referendum, I think the town council should step aside from that because that you are stepping into mm -hmm. and probably impeding yep. the electorate and the will of the people. And I don't think the town council should do that. And I would think about you would not want to do that. And, and Dick also pointed out to be a situation where, say, somebody does something so egregious that the Ethics Commission comes to this town council and says he needs to be removed. There is no, there's no avenue in this for ethics to get involved in this. 
Well, it would be for cause. Rick? According to what's being proposed. I see you standing. Just, just to amplify quickly on something Mr. Swanson just said. He left out one word that uh, has been used earlier this evening I want to bring up. Arguably. No, I'm leaving that one out. <laughs> if you're going to limit who can vote on what, based on what election they voted in previously, now we can start talking about constitutionality. And there's no notion to limit that. And Rick, not, that, 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 Rick, that has not been put into any of these no. proposals. It's not I understand that. It's only based about on half of them. Right, right. Rick, I, Rick, I was it absolute or arguably? <laughs> I'll use the first one you started with. I'll leave that absolutely. You corrected me. <laughs> Thank you. Well, the so semantics clear, are flying tonight. It's not a percentage of the percentage. Of the Chris, should I assume oh, we're going to read this? Could be go through a redraft? No, I totally and I'm just understand stating. that. Yeah, so it's um, all, based all on registered voters. Based on comments from the public, based on comments from council, I'm going to withdraw my motion. I'm going to go back and rewrite it. Well, have elections look at it because they need to come up with a scheme for right. that. Right, and that's, that'll be, I'm going to withdraw the motion. You, we've got some changes. We've got other changes suggested by, the, by, by Bruce. Once I have incorporated all those changes, I will then send it to the Board of Elections. Right, right. Now, can I ask one other question of the Council? If we're going to tune up recall without cause, we, and we've already identified some issues with the current um, charter amendment recall for cause. Mm -hmm. My preference, again, I stated it before, I'll state it again, my preference would be fix recall without cause. Well, you could bring Re this forward to repeal, replace the other one, right. Repeal that would, that the would other be one. the motion at that time. Okay, th that, that will be my intent. Okay. okay. So I withdraw the motion. So then. why not just do... I mean, instead of repealing it, it's already enacted. Why not just correct it for the time constraints that uh, Bruce ended up pointing out, where it's you know a day There's issue. There's a fairly substantial. This is a fairly substantial change. It's probably better for him to put together but all the package. I thought that's independent. Well, no. What he's saying now is, what he'd like us to do is, is, is with the passage of this, however it gets sorted out, repeal the other one. Yeah, it's got my intent is no, to do I this independently. Make this a replacement. Yeah, but replace it, because again, on principle. But if this doesn't pass, then, then, we have then, then you still have to right, go back so and fix the other one. If this doesn't pass, we still have to fix the other one. Break, you need to break, it break them out. My recommendation, make this in an conjunction amendment. with Councilman Everidge, is that we have Tom at least send what has been approved already to Bruce and his body so that they can end up reviewing that and look at those comments, because they should be applicable to Councilman yeah. Everett. Yeah, you're right. The, it already the gives them the heads up. It's yeah, already the been approved. The we need to get that fixed first. For both. Because, God forbid, there's a delay. Okay. Okay. We All can right. fix that now. Sounds good. All right, good. Thank you for the comments. So that ordinance has been withdrawn, and it's going to circulate back around. Unfinished business. Wait a minute. Hi, Debbie. Probably Debbie. We'll get together. <laughs> Thanks for coming, David. Uh, thanks to the commissioners for sending it. We appreciate it. Okay, we have already advertised the first one four times. Okay, so that just means yeah, the first good. one's already pa has already passed. Okay. So, okay. All right. Thanks, Debbie. So we just turned them in. Incredible. <laughs> Incredible. Oh, I've gotten texts from from Mary and from others over the course of these <laughs> meetings. I've given them my number and I say, if we're doing something really stupid, <laughs> text It's not me. a bad idea to use the technology. Well, because sometimes we're going to do something and Mary knows trash inside and out. Yeah. So she'll call up and say, hey, you know, they don't pick up that day or Like the recent. Something. Yeah, yeah, I didn't get a report yeah. that i got to bring up. Like today, I've been in and out of my garage so much, I put wheels on the bags. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, unfinished business, uh, Sakura. So um, the agreement you have uh, in front of you is redlined to include the Sakura's council's changes, uh, which I find acceptable and, and by and large not substantive. The only substantive change would be on page six, uh, paragraph eleven. I'm not even sure this is substantive, but it. It, it, this has to do with what the town has the right to charge someone outside the town limits. Yeah, and this reserves the right to charge additional charges at, if we decide to do that some point in the future. And he just wanted to make clear that except unless they're annexed into the town. With it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you remember, it. This, is, this is written so that 
we have a right to charge them more for water because they're not than we in do the town people because they're not actually in town. And this Correct. just basically says we're agreeing. If we do annex them and they do become part of town, that they'll get charged the same as everybody else. We'll be water. fair and equal. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, to me, that's a very reasonable request. Yep. No problem with it. So we just need a motion to approve I'll this I'll and allow the mayor to I'll sign. I'll, I'll, move, I'll move that we approve the extension of water service. Bob, were you going to second? Was that I the hand second. going up? That's we got a second. second. Any discussion on this? Yeah, just, just want to make sure that, yeah. for the record, we reflect a couple facts here. Because in the future, I don't want to get burned. You know, I don't want folks to come in and say, hey, you did this for somebody else. So first of all, for the record, um, the petitioner is paying all costs, all construction costs, well, can it, they're paying connection fees. They're also paying all of the town, our town attorney's fees. So this is not costing the taxpayers of the town anything. And it's the second thing I want to refer record to reflect is the town is being forced to do this. Mm -hmm. The town is not doing this on its, the MDE is forcing us to do this, provided we have sufficient water, which right now we do for one EDU. I just right. think it's important that we uh, have very good, very good points to make. This I, is not an open door. You're going to have to go to MDE and have them. Force, force us, provided force to do it. that we provided. have available resources. If, uh, right. Yeah. If we provided. don't. Any, any other discussion? No. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Unanimous. Thank you. All right. Now the big one, Tom. Scheinman property. Okay. I see Mary out there. He's, he's this getting rid of it. Is, uh, we have closed with Mr. Scheinman on the Scheinman property for rails to trails. He has signed the deed. This is here just to uh, vote on the acceptance of the deed, allow the mayor to sign his acceptance on behalf of the town. It. So we okay. can record it hmm. in the land records. Uh, and it I will move we accept there. the special second. warranty deed between the town and Scheinman Properties, LLC. Second. A second from Scott. Any discussion? Thank you, Mr. All in Scheinman. favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. Scheinman. And Thank you, Mr. Hushar. We got you a few more feet here you can work with. <laughs> Two more feet. Strategic financial plan update. Is that you, Chris? Yep, I got a couple slides. Can we sign that one too? Sign that one too? Sure. It's on bond. Can you sit Brian Flat? <coughs> I think I might get one of those. One of those two so, so, but he doesn't, he doesn't have like just fold over blue things or anything. No. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got Yeah, I got our council. Yeah. 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 Um, the community center task force started asking lots of questions about, hey, we'd like to build a community center. And when it came time to say, well, we can afford it or can't afford it, uh, there was no clear way to give them an answer, whether we could afford $700,000 to redo the flat iron building for $3.2 million. There was no real way to do it. So I started digging through the budget, trying to come up with, or trying to come up with a way to understand how our budget process works. Where our capital, mo where our money is, and see if we can afford to do things. So, um, next slide. Usual disclaimer: it's my opinion, nobody else's. Oh, it, it was needed adjustment. Yeah, perfect. Um, next slide. Okay, so update number two: the data calls are all finished. We have all the financial information um, together. I've held discussions with staff, and in talking to staff, trying to figure out how we present the information, we kind of changed directions a little bit. So we modified the direction where we're going, and I'll explain that direction, and I'm kind of looking for a consensus from the council. Ultimately, it, it'll be a mayoral decision on how we move forward. So next slide. So just by review, the reason why we're doing this, right, we're trying to implement the goals of the master plan for the community infrastructure. The main goal of the plan is to map out, you know, projects and gauge financial impacts. Right now, we have no real clear way of doing that that all of us can sit down and understand. Next slide. This hasn't changed components. We're looking at long-term infrastructure projects, short-term infrastructure projects, and financial obligations forced on us. Rain tax is an example of a financial obligation that's forced on us. Again, this is all review, things we've covered, covered before. Next slide. Priorities. You know, you, you might categorize the things we have to do from a strategic financial plan into two priorities, stuff we just got to do. We got to pay our roads and things like that. There's stuff that, secondary things, wish lists. You know, rails to trails is one of those wish lists. Um, although some, of course, would say that's something private. Yeah. 
Um, it's, yeah, right. Um, but you know, things like um, community center and, and other things, that are, which I'll explain in a moment, those become kind of wish lists. Next slide. Okay. So, and again, you know, the end goal, again, just by review, this takes a look at, you know, the, the money equation to see if we can do, you know, do what we'd like to do. Okay. All right. Next slide. What I've kind of discovered is, and what's important for everybody, especially on council, to understand is our budget really is four main components, all right? We have the general fund operating expenses. It keeps the lights on, keeps the police force in place, all right? All right, that, that's the amount of money it takes to run the town, operations and maintenance, so to speak. General fund, remember that. We have a general fund capital expenses. That's the important one. The general fund capital expenses, major and minor infrastructure projects. Really, everything I'll talk tonight falls into that category. So that's, that, just remember that. That's a key critical piece. Now, the other two parts of our budget, water and sewer operating and water and sewer capital expenses. Water and sewer is a separate category since all by itself is self-sustaining. So what we charge for the water and sewer system is what pays for the operations and maintenance. It pays for the capital expenses. So when I start talking about strategic financial plan, these two funds really come off the table because water pays for itself. Water and sewer pays for itself. Next slide. Okay, so <coughs> traditionally, there hasn't been any distinction in the general fund between stuff we got to have and stuff that's desired. I mean, if you look at the way we've always done our budget, you'll see our general fund capital expenses, and you'll see everything in there. The entire kitchen sink is in there. Things like center street improvements, things like a parking deck, all sorts of things are in there. And that's kind of how we've always done the budget. Now, you know, year in and year out, as long as the budget remains in the black and we're not going to grow, we really haven't looked further out the two, three, four, five years in that capital fund expenses to see if these things make sense. All right. So, and again, water and sewer, you know, it again sits by itself. Next slide. So, you know, statement. We have to continue to meet all the must have in the capital. We got to fix stuff before it breaks. We got to pave our roads. We got to comply with that rain tax. We got to replace vehicles. We want to complete current projects like rails, trails. Right? We're not going to defund those. You know, we need. You know, tonight may have been an example. We need to continue to fund the matching grants for open space so we get that. that Next slide. But if you start to look again at that general fund capital expenses. Everything else is in there. Can we afford Center Street extension and a large community center? I mean, if you look at the, the if you look at the sheet, and we have a, this is just a draft sheet. We'll get it published. I'll pull out an example for you. If I run out a few years, we've got a line item in here for a downtown parking garage. Well, okay. So if you look at the way, currently, the way our capital expenses are done, the general fund capital expenses, there's a downtown parking garage in there a couple years out. Well, that drives the, the bottom line to our capital expense really red, really negative, you know, two, three million bucks negative. Now, the question becomes, do we want to do the downtown parking garage? Or do perhaps we want to trade off and do a community center? Can we sequence funds over years for these different projects and make sure that our budget stays in the black? Our budget isn't currently organized like that. So, I mean, it's kind of one of the things that when I sat down with staff, looked at all the data, and again, asked the question, can we afford to do a community center? Can we afford to spend $3.2 million on a community center? Well, when you look at the capital fund expenses budget, we have all these projects in there that may or may not really happen. Center Street is an example. I mean, Center Street, that's an economic development push, meaning the completion of Center Street out to Route 27. Right? That's going to take a substantial amount of money. Uh, well, do we sacrifice that for a parking garage? Do we sacrifice the parking garage for 
fixes to the intersection of Twin Arch and Route 27. I mean, how do we spend our money? So, next slide. So, kind of just reiterating what I said. If you look at the way our budget runs with all of the must-have and all of the desired projects, we're red every single year from capital expense, to capital expenses, right, all the way out. Okay, so again, the way the budget's set up now, I cannot answer the folks, the Art Council folks, the Community Center Task Force, folks in our community who really want to do a community center. I can't ask, I can't answer, yeah, we can afford it, or no, we can't. So, that's right. So, you know, right now, again, those trends show red. That either means you pull money from reserves, and we do have reserves, but we haven't decided how to spend them. We've got 10 and 11 million dollars in reserves. We know we need to keep a certain percentage of funds in reserve. And on previous slides, I explained the different accounting methods. But let's just say ballpark, we have eight million dollars we could spend on projects. Again, how do we allocate that money smartly? Um, we can increase revenue, which everybody knows is the code word for taxes, and I don't think anybody in this council is going to do that. I'm certainly not going to advocate for that. Or we can start to prioritize projects and just drop stuff that's not going to happen. Yes, Bill. A couple of questions. Um, this approach assumes that all of the expenses are at pure cost. Partnership. There are some other potential ways to fund some projects. I would agree. I would absolutely agree. So the, the right, the idea here would be, let's take an example. And again, I'm not saying we're doing community center. I'm not saying we're not. Let's just say we've run all these numbers. We've eliminated the parking garage because it's not going to happen. But we can afford over the next four years, 250K reaching a million dollars for community center. As long as we can get a million dollar matching grant, then we can go ahead. So absolutely that would be part of this process. Some assumptions on, on grants. Yeah. The other possibility is that some of them could potentially be scaled. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. So that's a possibility. Right. <coughs> Yes. Uh, you, maybe we could afford to build the large shell of a redo the flat iron building, and then we don't have the funds to complete it for a specific purpose until we get a grant or something like that. Yeah, uh, those possibilities certainly exist, but I'm, I've been struggling working with staff to try to come up with a method to display the information so we can start to make those decisions and those trade-offs. The last comment is that, especially with regard to Yeah, absolutely. And that's very, very important. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, actually one of the things that, that, that has come to mind that, that I looked at over the weekend, and it's something I would suggest staff help me with. If you look at the town of Berlin out in Ocean City, I mean, the town of Berlin for many years really was not thriving. And with, you know, years ago when they read the, the Atlantic Hotel and then all the other business went in, it's doing very, very well. I mean, if they did it, I think we could do it as well. So, yeah, maybe there's opportunities, or maybe we want to consider public-private partnerships as well. Again, I don't know. These are just ideas and concepts. But unless we have a good idea of how much, frankly, how much cash we have to work with, and we've been sitting on the reserves for as long as I've been associated with council, five, six years, maybe longer, since I've been on planning. And we have no plan, no method, no thought to how we're going to use that money. We should use it to the benefit of this community. 
So, but I don't yet know how to do that. So, but very, very good points. So and please jump in if anybody else. Has well, I was going to wait till your presentation was complete. Okay. A few comments. Next slide. Okay. Not, not, not suggesting raising taxes. No one's suggesting we raise taxes. Um, so, uh, kind of what I just said. We create a realistic baseline and separate the must-have and the desired. We start whacking away until we get the numbers to black. Or, you know, as, as the Chairman of the Planning Commission suggests, we whack away, but we identify opportunities that, yeah, we could afford if, you know, we kick in half and we can get a grant for half or, or something to that effect. Next slide. All right. How we move forward. And then again, this is a suggestion because the budget process is the mayor's purview, sends it to the council for the council to, to, to work with the pass. Um, my suggestion is, you know, I start working with staff, and, you know, with the mayor and the mayor to start to identify must-haves and try to get us to a capital expense budget that's in the black, or at least reasonably in the black. Uh, the downtown parking garage, uh, I mean, I don't know if we can afford to do that. And even if we did, I don't know if the benefit's there. Other folks may differ, and that's fine. It's part of the process. And then we look at the desired funds and see where we can go. Next I slide. Schedule, I hope to be done by now, but sitting down with staff, we kind of said, well, you know, we still have no clear way to demonstrate it, but here's kind of where we sit. Um, you know, in, in mentioning keeping things on, um, Larry, how long was Rails to Trails on the Parks and Recs agenda? Uh, well, the whole time I was there. So I, started, I started Parks in 1996, yeah. and it was It, it predates you and me, Bob. That's yeah. every, every 20, 20 years. years. That's hard yeah. to do. So it's sometimes there is some valuable benefit to keeping a desired item on the agenda or on the budget. Yep. And actually, so I'm announcing that. Because it just, it just so happened that the right, ga right guy came along. Right. And Larry's actually volunteered. Once he's done with Rails to Trails, Larry's volunteered to help me. I don't think that's <laughs> But I want to tell you on Rails to Trails. I mean, we're sitting on a $35,000 grant that we can't exercise. So money is out there to get these things done. The, the uh, council, I mean, excuse me for suggesting it, but you have to have the fortitude to get out there and, and move. Right. Right. And just, but, but the, and Larry, I'm, I support Rest of you know I do, but as an example, though, let's say that there was, there's a $35,000 need there, but we had a $35,000 need somewhere else, and we as a community, and not the council, we as a community decided, okay, well, this other thing takes higher precedence, higher priority. I mean, we, we have no real solid rationale right now, I, I think. I appreciate the, the, the one I mean, it's, it's, you guys have a just very, very quickly, because it's the evening hour, is getting late. Yeah. Are we carrying a budget line item for an, a uh, parking garage in the budget? That only came up when we started talking 10 years out. I'm just, I know my question is very specific. Is there a dollar amount in the forecasted budget for a parking garage yes. in, in our current budget? Not in our current five-year plan, no. Okay. No, but in, but in the 10-year out somewhere, there is one sitting in there. Again, holder. let's please stop. The approved budget that we approved is a well, line That's only this year. There's no line okay. item in this year's budget. If I could, Councilman, if I could, um, the question is to if the lady hands our counting. In our current approved budget by council, is there a line item for parking garage? Yeah. Okay, let's be very clear. That is not in our budget right now. Okay? That is not in our forecasted budget or the approved budget by council. Is there a line item in there to extend Center Street through? Um, are you only asking about this year? Or are you asking no, the approved the budget. budget. When, when we, we approve our budget, budget is only this year. The approved me. budget has a five year outlay yes. in it. But so we're not approving a five-year outlay. We're only approving no, a year. No, I know that. I understand that, but you're missing my point. We're approving a budget that has those numbers in it. You know, I know we're not approving that expense, but we're approving theoretically that we your will do that later. Point. That's my point. I don't, I think we need to adjust a few things. First of all, I should start off with, I compliment very much what Councilman Everidge is doing. He's been working hard. We do a budget. I take some exception with that we're in the red, we're not. That aside, this is a great plan. What Chris is doing, he's establishing a vision for the town for all these bigger projects. That has never been done before. That's awesome. But when you get down into the weeds as your chief executive officer or chief financial officer as well, 
I have some concerns with it being portrayed as red, some things that are in the budget that are not actually in the budget. So let's work together. Let's let's get this through. I was glad that Council or Bill Butts made, the, if, if I could, had made the clarification. We don't have to spend $3.2 I don't want people out there watching TV thinking that, well, they're t we're discussing a community center for $3.2 million. We are not. No. In fact, there's ways to get that community center for zero. So I just want right, to be, let me, uh, I just, so I just want to be, be careful. Let me finish the floor. Okay, but let me, Pat, let me just hit that, that point. The, the idea here is the information and the numbers that, that Charlene and I and, and Monica and Barney have been playing with, that's really what we're oh, yeah, yeah, that's all I make very clear. It's a draft. I don't want this to be thought as absolutes. This is what we have. Because, yeah. in fact, is we have no money in the budget for a downtown uh, parking garage or a center street extension. These are things we think about, but right. they're so not the, in the budget. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, we think about right. it. The, right. The point, the point of the exercise is, is exactly what you just said. These are things that we've been thinking about, yet we haven't moved on it yet. Yes don't have a plan yes. to say we're going to do this, we're not going to do this. Totally we don't agree. Have a plan to totally say agree. we can afford this, we simply can't afford it. It's an Chris, you're, you're on the right track. I just, as your CFO, I had to make some sure. quick clarifications to make myself feel comfortable and people out there just to clarify. You're on the right track. We need a vision. You're bringing us that. Thank you. You're doing a great job. And, and once again, those items like rails to trails that stay on the that stay on the agenda for for years and years and years and never get acted on, and then the right guy comes along, and all of a sudden stuff starts happening. Okay. Thanks, Chris. And by the way, our reserves have gone up for the last several years. Let's make that last clarification. <laughs> all right. Nice. Wildwood Park, sections four, five, six. We've got this request here for the town to take over their stormwater management pond. Stormwater maintenance pond. Um, like stormwater management pond. Um, Did everybody receive a copy of this letter? I want to apologize. It's quite possible that I overlooked it. It was addressed to me. Copy. Did you get a copy of that? But yeah. have you had a copy since June 19? Hmm? I have a copy of my packet. Okay, well, I just received, I want to apologize to the Wildwood community. I just received a copy of this letter. It could have been through my own error that it was given to me and I overlooked it. Uh, I did see some of the issues in here and it does concern me and this is the first time I've seen it tonight. I would hope the council would uh, hear any cases uh, that you care to make, review this and then study this and perhaps come back with a recommendation at a later date. Because some of this stuff does concern me and I don't know if there's enough information. Again, I apologize for not seeing this letter. And, and every council member has this letter addressed to me, correct? From Wildwood Community Center? Yeah, I do, yeah. I do. Good. Mm -hmm. It's my recommendation. What was exactly what was the recommendation? The re recommendation was to study this. If, if, has, has anybody read it before tonight? No. Nope. Okay. People haven't read this. I haven't either. <coughs> this is an issue we need to research. My apologies. We didn't research it before. I would like to hear. I, I think we have some representatives from the Wildwood community. And if they had any information to present, I would suggest to council that we hear everything out and then study this for next month before making any kind of decision. Okay. So you're suggesting that they make a Okay. Well, if they had something to say. Well, can we get the lights back on? Yeah. Well, Bob, we actually need to mic you. Uh, would you feel? Do we have a mic that's portable that we can? Um, not we, we can hear, Bob. I can, I can get up there. He's, he's loud. We, we can hear. We hear. All right, be loud and deep. Yeah, we can. Hear. Can Debbie? Can you hear him? She's out on TV there. <laughs> not the camera, Doug. She's not controlling. She's not controlling the camera. <laughs> You're looking. <laughs> yes, she is. My name is Bob Lowe. I'm uh, one of the members of the Board of Directors for the Wildwood Park Homeowners Association. Uh, the issue that's coming up here this evening that we're asking the Council to look at, back when our Homeowners Association was initially developed, we're going back 18, 19 years ago, the builder at that time specified in the covenants for our Homeowners Association that once the entire community was built out, that we, the Homeowners Association, would be responsible for all future maintenance and repairs to the stormwater management pond that services our property as well as other properties. Uh, we don't feel that it's fair that we should have to bear all of that burden. Uh, Lorian Nursing Home uh, their property feeds into it. 
There are homes along Park Avenue. The runoff from their properties all feed into it. So we're going to be stuck with the cost of having to maintain it. Now this is not a huge sum of money. Uh, most maintenance for this management of the stormwater management pond involves uh, spraying for pesticides during the summer months uh, for mosquitoes and <clears throat> also for cutting the grass and maintaining the general condition of the property. Now I should add at this point that once the community is built out, the stormwater management pond will be turned over to Carroll County. It becomes their property in fee simple. And they determine what regulations and requirements that this stormwater management pond has to meet, but they don't put any monies out to support it. It's just, hey, it's our property, you get to maintain it. So we don't feel that that's right. We feel like we're being dumped on here uh, because of that. The uh, other issue, at one end of the stormwater management pond, there's a concrete structure that's referred to as a weir. And that weir is what controls the flow of water in and out of the pond. This particular pond is what they call a wet pond, so there's always water there. At some point in the future, and granted, it, hopefully it'll be many, many years down the road, that weir will have to have repairs or replacement done to it. Also, approximately every 20 years, and this is depending on how much stormwater flows into the stormwater management pond and how much sediment is picked up along the way, that pond will have to be dredged out. And uh, those are cost items that are pretty big ticket if that has and when that time comes that that has to be done. So that's, that's the situation we're in. We're asking the town to help us out here and see if they can take and come up with the monies to maintain this pond or work out some other amicable agreement. Okay. Uh, and again, as I suggested, I would ask that uh, council uh, uh, task me or uh, let us do a study uh, let Barney do a study of some of the issues that were mentioned about some of the runoff, look at the public works agreement, look at future maintenance, and maybe we can get a staff recommendation uh, by the next month's council meeting with you heading that up. That's what I would suggest. Thank okay. you, Bob, for coming Thank out. You. Well, just a question. What does it cost you all to maintain it now? Right now, it's not costing us anything because the builder, the Berger job. Berman, is still responsible for the maintenance of the property. At this point in time, the stormwater management pond uh, is still under his authority and uh, he has a bond actually in place to make sure that he completes it and brings it up to code before the county will accept it. Okay. Now, something else that I, I know, because I, I think another pond you're talking about, this would require is the town obtaining easements over the properties to access this so some of your homeowners are likely to have to you know yeah there there is already an access to this property between two of the homes on the property okay. and um, we would obviously have to take yeah. over whatever that easement is if we were to do right. this oh, no. okay. right yeah well i guess barney would probably come up with some kind of pricing these would be i mean we don't, we don't have a clue what we're sure, talking about sure. That. we don't know the public works agreement we don't know anything yeah. at this point and is it yeah. typical for the county to take these things over, Barney? Do you know I? No, I, mean, I, I don't remember ever hearing about the county taking I mean, one. Typically, no. it's listed in the uh, the plat who this be, um, belongs to. They usually say HOA. And I, I don't think this is to be dedicated to the county or to the town. I think it becomes it's the HOA. HOA property. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. But is that common? I mean, yeah. It's going to be whatever's in the public works agreement. In Summit Ridge, we don't take care of our stormwater management pond. We have at least two. Right. Three. Right. We so have three. Single family home. Uh, it's normal it's for the town to take the for town to take it, but in a multi-family dwelling, there are some differences. Right. Right. Okay. We well, we're going to research this thoroughly, and uh, then town council will be able to make a... Okay, I can add to what Barney said. Throughout Carroll County, there are these stormwater management ponds everywhere. The ones that are on commercial property, the commercial business that owns that property is responsible for it. I understand that there are one or two 
stormwater management ponds that are owned both by commercial and residential. And in that case, they default to the commercial entity to take care of the cost. Okay. There, there is a provision, just so you'll know, uh, in our town code that uh, uh, sets forth a procedure by which 60% uh, of the property, uh, let me back that up, 60% uh, of the owners of the properties served by the storm, wan storm water management facilities um, uh, can request uh, that the town take over maintenance uh, of the stormwater management. I think Councilman Average is going to give you that section. Um, okay. That That's you true, all may they're want giving to up a property that. right, and so the whole organization would have to go through a, a formal petition like we're trying to do with Townview. Right. But right. if you get them to give up the property, you could have a conduct. Okay. That's what it sounds like. Could, um, you have no problem getting those votes. If um, Lorian flows into that area, can you compel them? Is there a means or mechanism? That's, I think that's a good point. I think, so I, th I think Barney ought to evaluate that. Is there a means or mechanism to compel them? Yeah, good point. Well, that's so why I was kind of shocked to read this. Did you see the letter? Yeah. But we, we need to verify well, it as well. Well, but from a legal perspective. Behind. Yeah, that's not a legal document. <coughs> from it's a legal perspective. It's showing perspective. Right the public down, works agreements. Property, this is all laid out. <coughs> yeah. Well, I, I guess I think obviously staff's going to have to do all the yep. research in the background on this. Yep. And come back to us and let us give us some clues. Yep. Thank you sure. very much for bringing Thank us. You Bob. Thank you, Bob. Sure. Always, Always good, good to Bobby, see you. Yeah, on the town code's online. So okay. That section addresses that. Already fine. Thank you very much. <coughs> Bob, who else is with you from Wildwood Park? I'm sorry? Who else is with you? Board of oh, Director. Uh, yeah. My good buddy, Gene. Gene, okay. Hi, Gene. <laughs> Thanks for joining us tonight. As long as you didn't bring John Weaver. <laughs> Thank goodness. All right. <laughs> Next up, uh, recommendation for B and O C 2095 Restoration Service Project. That's me, Peter. All right. These are the bids for the uh, caboose. Quickly, it's late. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, this is the recommendation for the. Uh, Town staff is seeking council approval to award the B&O C 2095 Restoration Service Project to the bid that is in the best interest for Mount Airy. Uh, the town solicited for project bids on May 27th and collected final bids on June 26th. Uh, although three caboose restoration companies received information on the po project and were interested, only one bid was received on this project from the B&O Museum. Um, a reputable company that's already established a re relationship with the town and with the Mount Airy Community Fund. And just to step backwards, history for, for everybody um, watching tonight, um, the Mount Airy Community Fund, a local nonprofit, 501c3 status, in May of, 20, of this year was the recip recipient of this historic Baltimore and Ohio train caboose. Uh, that, which was donated to them from a local property business owner, Robert Scranton. Uh, the caboose is in poor condition. It's in need of restoration. And currently, this community fund is spearheading a fundraising effort at, out at Watkins Park is where the caboose is located currently. Uh, and they've already raised $4,400. And you can keep track of their fundraising at their website also. Um, so the, the plan is to partner with the Town of Mount Airy and the Mount Airy Community Fund would donate the caboose to the town after fundraising and the restoration has been finalized. Um, but the town um, at that point would decide whether to lease the caboose back to a nonprofit like the Mount Airy Community Fund or a different nonprofit, whether it be the Lions Club if they had an interest or the Mount Airy Main Street Association, they can do decide in the future on that. Um, and the final location plan for this train caboose right now is uh, on Robert Scranton's property just behind the parking lot at 2 North Main Street, which is next to Ben Goo's gift and collectibles shop. So right along the rail trail corridor. Um, so to fund the project, um, the town has actually budgeted this year 
for this train could boost $94,800 for the restoration. Um, and the B&O Railroad Museum would need 50% of the project costs up front and six months they would need the next. I'm getting jumbled. It's okay. <laughs> There's a lot of information. It's already Excellent. been approved. Keep going. Um, so, what do you want so the do? staff recommends that the town council award this project number 2014 MAG 095 to the Baltimore Railroad Museum in the amount of $94,800 and all donations toward the project to the Mountary Community Fund will go towards offsetting the town's project costs. And I, I want to add something that I didn't write in this paper. Um, perhaps that we add a condition that there's a memorandum of understanding with the Mountary Community Fund that they will be donating the caboose to the town. Yeah, I guess it's an ownership question. Who actually? Who's it? It's it's Legally the Mountain Community them. Funds currently. They own the caboose yeah. currently. I think it's been gifted to them. It has been. Um, and okay. one other facet I should add is that we'll know on Thursday whether the grant I applied for through the Maryland Historical Trust was awarded to match this cost, but that's not guaranteed. But that would be in the amount of forty-seven thousand four hundred dollars. So we uh, we could get about half of it paid for. Right. But we budgeted the full amount already. Right. Right. So we have the full amount budgeted, but I, I do agree that we we need to structure this to make sure that they, you know, we get control of the caboose back right. for restoring. Right. If you're paying the town owns the caboose as opposed to the okay. community. Okay. Larry, is that is that okay? You want me to stay for it? Are you okay with that? Yeah. Or we're asking about ownership. Well, of the, the issue caboose. is over ownership of the caboose. Yeah, the uh, ownership of the caboose right now is the Mount Airy Community Fund, which is a sub branch of the uh, uh, Community Foundation of Carroll County. Uh, so, uh, so yes, basically Diane Martin is the closest thing that we can point to as a person. The understanding and the reason for that was so that uh, uh, the donator of the caboose and digging and rigging could get their tax breaks for donating to a nonprofit. At the end of the restoration, the caboose will be turned over to the town. It's up to the town what they want to do with it. They can lease it back to a nonprofit, okay. any of them. Okay, They could hold on to it and say, this is our visitor center, and they could put Heather and Melissa in it and use it as their office. So at that point, whatever the town wants to do with it no air is fine. The only reason why it's under the nonprofit now is so that uh, right. so that we can apply for other grants, like uh, uh, Diane Martin's applied for the daily grant, uh, which hopefully would bring in about fifteen thousand uh, dollars. Melissa's grant that uh, what's the name of the organization that you applied? It's to? the Maryland Historical Trust, okay. called the Maryland Heritage Areas Authority Grant. Okay, yeah. which should be awarded by the end of this by this week. Thursday. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna know if we have that grant or not. Uh, now, we've been out there running around looking at other cabooses and trying to figure out an approximate cost of getting a caboose restored or trying to find one that's in better condition. And I would tell you that, uh, uh, that the cabooses that we've gone and looked at, we've looked at two, uh, Mayor Rockenberg and I went out there and, and looked at a couple of them, are in worse shape <laughs> than what we have right now. It's hard to find a, a good caboose. The one good caboose that I did find <laughs> Now, they don't, now they don't, I know they just they, they, other, they don't make them anymore. Other railroad problems. <laughs> that that guy's got, got a little one. Right even the one that we found Dr. in decent shape. Understands. By the time that you add the uh, add the shipping costs and everything to it, is uh, is still going to run you power up around steering, fifty thousand. If you're going to get the power steering and the power brakes and uh, and the couplers that don't catch on fire. Uh, anyway, bottom line is uh, I would be perfect. The, the B&O Museum is the only place that Melissa and, and the research that I've done is the only place that can do this really decent uh, quality restoration on the caboose and give us a good quality product. There are some <coughs> ways to do things cheaper, but my, my recommendation is that if the grant comes through, then, then there's no better place to send it than the B&O Museum. Okay, so I think our only question no. was making sure 
that there's something somewhere in writing that we actually get the It's coming back. back. <laughs> right, but we're just if, not, if we you need to put it in writing, put it in writing, Diane, be more than happy. I think we're just saying in MOU that we're just saying that you know when it's restored, it comes. It comes back to you, no doubt. I will. I will move. Okay. I'm going to move that we accept this uh, memorandum uh, for this restoration service project 2014-MA-G-095. I'll second it. Provided <laughs> that, Scott's already seconded. Uh, provided that uh, Tom come up with you know, a very simple MOU I mean, to assure that the, when this is done, the caboose comes back right, to the town. That the town of Mount Area owns it at the end of the at process. At the end of the process. Discussion. Any discussion? Yeah, I do have some discussion. Uh, Larry's having a son. Uh, so, are you making this purchase or repair contingent on us receiving the grant? No, no, no. it's not. No, the we full amount we've is budgeted allotted. the money in the complete amount. We'll just save money if we get grant. We'll just save money if we get the grant. Right. Yeah. That goes to the parking bay. It's okay. Yeah, I, I just, I'm just wondering if it was contingent on the grant or not. No, we've budgeted. We've already budgeted full amount. We just won't spend that so, money if the grant money comes in. You, you can make your amendment, and I'll still second. Larry, can no, I, can no, I, can no, I ask no, a question? What it is. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I had an opportunity to thoroughly review this uh, repair of the $90,000 estimate. I've not done so. I've asked uh, Jack Raines, a local train expert in town, to go out and take a look. I did not receive that feedback. $90,000 is a lot of money. Uh, have you thoroughly reviewed uh, the extent of the work they're going to do? I mean, is, is this all absolutely necessary in your opinion? And you've worked this for many years. That's why I look to you for counsel on this. Well, Ed, uh, Councilman Evers can tell you, I always draw things down to a Cadillac plan and a Pinto plan. And, uh, okay. uh, uh, no doubt the B&O Museum is a Cadillac plan. The, the good deal with it is that they're going to physically pull the roof off of this caboose, go in, fix all the dry rot, and we're going to get a good solid caboose back that that is is going to be good for a long that's duration. my point it's going to be good for a long time sure, and yeah. other people were given the opportunity to bid and they did not that is true that uh, concerns me okay so that's no. good you can yeah. answer my concerns okay thank you all right uh well, we've got a motion on the table in a second all in favor say aye 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 Who's unanimous all right, that moves us into mayor and council reports. We got a mayor's report and some uh, Do you want to release some bonding and some the more. street sweeper? Because you know, I know. Okay, guys. You got the wrong <laughs> oh, I'm using the one that I was told. Brian's to tired of pushing a broom down Main <laughs> Street. <laughs> using, See, I'm looking out for Brian. His broom is worn out. Is, yeah, is this this broom sweeper is, or this street sweeper is he part time or full time? The street sweepers is part time. Or he doesn't time. know the history on that. Okay. He cuts the grass. It's an automatic. He cuts the grass the other time. So, street sweeper. Okay, now here's the two agendas that I have. Good body, next. One of, them, one of them says revise 7 2 2000. Okay. That's the one you should Flip be it using. Over. Gotcha. There you go. Oh, I don't have that on my seat. I'm done what I'm saying. I, <laughs> Pick the one that gets us out. I just learned that tonight. As we go through, if I miss one, let me know, because it's obviously somewhere in these agendas. We've got some, oh, I see it on this one, but it's not on this one. Don't use your scribbly note one. Reason bonding on Backacre. Well, this was the earlier scribbly one. All right, let's get over this. <laughs> I'm home this evening. Um, I assume that this is a uh, standard. Sorry. Standard release of bonding. What was what was the what was the amount that we're releasing in the bonding? Here we go, women. I got it. I've got it. Thirteen thousand six forty one twenty is the recommended amount, and that is the requested amount. I will move. We release as recommended. Any we got a second? Any re any record? Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, and then we've got the Mary, you can sign all this. We've got the Street Sweeper Award. <laughs> I assume the Street Sweeper is that your probably your thing, Brian? Yes. Do you have that? She says you have copies for the town council. Oh, yeah. Brian, just give us a quick summary. The Reader's Digest condensed version. It's an already budgeted Sorry. item. Uh, yes. The original street, street sweeper that we had. There's only a couple here. Just four, four, four. It's not worth putting the money in to get it going. We went out on the market. We've run Pelican and we've run Tenant for the town. Uh, we are 
are going one. back to the Elgin sweeper. This is not a vacuum sweeper. This is strictly conveyor belt only. There you go. There you go. Uh, the reason why I went with that, maintenance. When you run the back system, the money to keep that thing on the road is astronomical. It goes to conveyor belt. It's perfect for the leaves and the rock debris that we have around the town. City of Baltimore just purchased three of these. It's a it's a great product. Uh, they definitely built it by the Kiss principle, and we definitely like that here. Thank you. So mm -hmm. I'm asking to get awarded. We're piggybacking with Baltimore City. They just put the bid package out and everything. It was awarded back in November of last year. Uh, the company said they would still honor that price. We're getting five thousand dollars trade in for our old one. So that knocks us back down to 178. Yeah, we're actually we get getting money for that. The last one we got rid of, I think, ended up on a driving range with people hit golf balls at it. Yes. And yeah, we had to drag it to where we got it. <laughs> right. I was a kid. There was, there was junk when we got rid of it. Now, with this new one, I guess you're not going to be able to do the, the leaf vacuuming anymore like you would do with this old one? Yeah, and honestly, with the old one, we discontinued using that. We have a old one back that we've refurbished and put it hanging on the back of a dump truck. That's what we used last year to pick up. Okay, so you're not doing that with it any, anymore anyways, okay. Yeah, I mean, we just walked behind the dump truck last year. Well, as I would call this one, will, this one will be much better at getting the grass from the edges. We hope. Yeah. There is no guarantee with that. Uh, we, we are going to a mixture of wire and plastic brushes. In theory, it should work better. But if you're going 40 mile an hour trying to street sweep, it's not going to work, so, you know, the operator's just got to learn how to run it. The great thing with this vehicle is this is actually a two-part vehicle. It has an Isuzu chassis, which means it's roadworthy. It'll do 85 mile an hour down the highway, and the street down. sweeper is a bolt on appliance. So if we ever have a problem with the motor, transmission, frame, electrical system, we take it directly to an Isuzu dealer. We have a problem with the street sweeper. We it's take it directly item. back to the builder. Gotcha. They've, they've decided to, instead of the street sweeping company trying to work on a truck, which they don't maintain, now they've reinvented the wheel and said, hey, <coughs> get smarter about this. And your warranty is completely through Azuzu now. So we, it's just like buying a pickup truck through Azuzu. All those things hold true. That truck. The brushes are both on take There's no American made equivalent. Yeah. Brush, yeah. So, question for you, if the street sweeper part is a bolt-on, can be separated from it, can we put a plow on it and use it as an extra plow vehicle? No, because it has booms out the front, it has brooms out the front. So it's it's not but you can't use it as a sweeper to sweep the snow. To sweep the snow, shoot the snow. No, no four-wheel drives. It's not four-wheel drive. All right. Have you thoroughly thought this through? I'm kidding. Nice Does presentation. Does Thanks, Brian. It works to a degree, but you have to go. We we have to triple pass everything and this, now. Just and this to pick up this will come in just slightly under budget if I'm reading it right. Correct. We budgeted 180, and he's showing it'll cost 178 and change. So I, I will move that we accept this um, street sweeper um, bid that we've come in. That's uh, piggybacking on the city of Baltimore for the who's turn? The Elgin. Ken, it's your turn. Item, your turn, Jim. You get Anybody want to have a second, second on that? No second. Good. Yeah. Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 All right. You got your get order in that sweet street sweeper, Brian. All right. Now, Racing guys, now. This, this I'm gets, looking at these two agendas, and it looks like we're on mayor and council reports. Okay. Back. So I will not read my official report. Last month I didn't as well, but I did send it out. I don't know if council received it, uh, and I will not read it again this month. I will note a couple items. Again, kudos to Ben Galecki of Manary Liquors, Chris Coleman, Dr. Chris Coleman of Manary Eye Care, Denise Fox, the Fox Realty team, Digging Rigging, and all the other vendors that made our fourth or second annual Fourth of July ceremony 
believe the spectacular <coughs> event that it was, it was outstanding. Uh, this year, the town did step up to the plate a little bit to assist because it did prove itself. We provided some security. I'd like to thank town council for budgeting that money. We also would like to thank Brian Johnson and his crew. We found out late that same evening that we'd lost some of our cleanup people, and I had some complaints from some of the neighbors, so I had the town staff members to step up, and they went out there the following day and helped clean up. Uh, last year, we had volunteers, including me and Mary Beth. This year, we were... We didn't have to be there, so that was great. Thank you, and thank the town for all they did to make that happen. Uh, we did get our new car right before the end of the budget year, so that's back there. And again, that was not an additional vehicle. It actually helped replace a vehicle. And uh, we did receive an $18,000 FEMA grant uh, for snow emergency. Uh, we did go about $10,000 over budget, uh, even including that grant, but it did a lot to help us. Uh, and given the, the winter that we had and the uh, amount of snow events, that was really uh, good. So my report will be filed later. I have some recommendations. I'll just read them all off. I have an Allen Bivard for Parks and Recs. Uh, everybody should have received their commission candidate forms. I have Charles Beck for Parks and Recs, and I have Harry Snodgrass for Economic Development. I ask for your approval. I move we... Uh, yeah, go ahead, Bob. I'll make a motion. Let they be approved. You get, you get second it then, Chris? <laughs> sure, I'll say Okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 It's always the bad And uh, Pat, while you're on the, you, you just did one thing. You mentioned that we now have the new car. We have the Tahoe sitting out there in the parking lot. As far as I know, all it needs is a transmission. So I think we've got money and budgets that we could just do that. So what, what do you think? So I would right? say, should, let's. I mean, well, as long as it's, 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 it's under three grand. At least 11 years old. Right. Not 12 years old. We, we normally keep that type of vehicle for 12 years. So it's exceeded. So you're well, saying, well, right, we're, is, we're right we, at that verge. My question is, should we put a new transmission in it? And then sell it? Or no, and then use it. I mean, it's a four-wheel drive vehicle, and I mean, you've got, you're not driving anything currently. And, I mean, we could... I know the state police. Well, I, I, I think it's a good. Why don't, well, just vehicle. actually, state police had to borrow it. Yeah. So. So well, just, why don't why don't we look at that? That's a good a good point. Let, let's let's evaluate it. Yeah, I have not evaluated. I'm, I'm not going to. I hope. Solid otherwise. Well, I don't, right. don't want to sit here and discuss yeah. it tonight. Make a. I mean, that's kind of a thing you want to yeah, look at. Up. Discuss. See what the resale right. value is. But let's look well, at it. I, my understanding is it's a solid vehicle other than transmission. And we replace transmissions in the vehicles fairly often. Okay. So I'll, I'll take a good hard look at that and let you guys you know, know. It's just sitting out there. Good good point. So just, just bringing it up while, while, oh, yeah. while you were mentioning it. I'd oh, yeah. Good, good point. Barney, let's right. talk about that. Pros and cons. Yep. Sanitation uh, and the Arts Council. <laughs> so we, we're going to kind of split it. Yeah, we, we've I'm got, gonna, this needs to be looked at. Yep. <laughs> so I'm going to do sanitation recycling. Councilman King will handle our council. Um, so for sanitation recycling, we did not have a meeting in June. Our next meeting is actually July 16th here at Town Hall at 7 p.m. Uh, one point to note for recycling recently, I'm sure everybody noticed the lawn bags weren't picked up on Saturday like they were supposed to be. Uh, our provider had their truck break down. They notified us late that they had to get it fixed. Um, they're rectifying the situation now. They've been in touch with town staff as well as the mayor. I've gotten feedback from them as well. They're going around through the communities now trying to pick it up as fast as they can. With a, um, They guaranteed us no later than by Wednesday. So some of the people that have already contacted me sent me emails saying that they got it today. So just make sure it's out and they'll get it by Wednesday. Um, the other thing, just a uh, small point leading into Parks and Rec. I don't know if I did this last time or not, but I'm going to do it again. I wanted to thank Ace Hardware for donation of a post hole digger to uh, the Rails to Trails effort. They stepped up and just gave it to the town so that we could dig holes uh, working on the trail. So I just want to tell them thank you. And that concludes my report for sanitation recycling. Councilman King? Arts. No, go ahead. I'll, I'll get all mine together. OK. So he'll do arts at his time. OK. Parks. Uh, Parks and Rec beautification. All right. Uh, first, I'll start on beautification. beautification uh, has finished their project, which is signs for the parks. Nice. This is the basic new format of the signs that are going to be going in the parks. I think the Watkins Park one is budgeted for this upcoming year, so it should you should see that one going in soon. But the new this will kind of be the new format as best you can see it for what signs will look like. They had nice big ones when they were looking at them. I just had this one for now, but uh, that'll look nice. Some nice standard signs in our parks will look nice. So I appreciate beautification getting to work on that. Um, camp night is coming up on 8-9 in Watkins Park. Everybody be there. 
Um, What's the movie? What? Despic Maid. Yes. Despicable oh, Maid. I have that here, yes, for Camden. And then on the 2nd of August, I think we have the War Wagon showing. Um, yeah. John Wayne, Kirk Douglas, the War Wagon. That's a good one. <laughs> Um, so that one's going to be showing. So those are events that are going on. The other big issue, of course, we have just tonight purchased the Shyman property. So that's another piece in our rails to trails puzzle. Um, we also saw a presentation at the parks meeting on the ideas behind um, energy production in Windy Ridge Park, uh, a group that um, you know does some stuff relating to windmills and those kinds of things and solar came and discussed with us some ideas for Windy Ridge Park and the uses that. It's the same group that came and, and talked to us same group that came to you guys, I think, I'm planning. Did they set up that the test that they were yeah, supposed um, to set up? No, they, no. OK, that's that's an answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's one I wait, hear wait, wait, too, It's one I hear far too often, too. Yeah, it, no, it, there, there was some issues about now having to permit the pole that they raise it on. And they were trying to work through those issues. They have to get a permit from, I think, Frederick County. To stick it on a pole? To stick it, to stick the anemometer on a pole, because it's up in the air a gazillion feet. There's no uh, sign on it, right? That's no, it's just a. Just kidding. Okay. A a one for my part, but. <laughs> Tell them to put a political it's sign on it. It's on the Frederick side, it's it's, 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 it's it's relatively <laughs> high and. And they, but or Jan they, Gardner, in the interest of Frederick, fairness. Frederick County, Frederick County is is requiring a permit. Right. See Frederick. In. <laughs> okay. Um, I can come up with a side order. Well, and, um, and uh, next parks meeting will be on July 17th. That's the third Thursday of the month. Um, Larry, do you know when next beautification is? Uh, I haven't. I thought that was the last Monday of the month. Okay. It's it's. It's a, it's a Tuesday. It's a something Tuesday. Third Tuesday. Okay, so same week as Parks, because I've got guys I'm the new liaison on this one. So, um, so it'll be the third Tuesday for um, for beautification, and that's uh, beautification and Parks. Planning, EDC. You want to go first? No. You go first with planning, and then I'll go with EDC and water and all this other stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, master plan update. It's imminent. It's going to be turned over to the council very shortly. We're just kind of waiting to complete the maps. Once it's turned over to the council, we have how many days to finish it? 60 days. 60, and that includes the public hearings, correct? Two. That is correct. All right. So should we start looking at setting dates for public hearings? Debbie, call in. I would, um, would you rather wait? I would rather... Wait. wait until I have the maps in hand okay. and, and, and have, be able to give you a definitive date where I will be giving Got it. you the physical document. Okay. All right. So that's just a kind of a fair warning to us that that's on its way relatively soon. And that's the culmination of how many years' worth of work? Years' worth of work. A gazillion. Yeah. yeah, okay. All right, um, recent site plans were approved. Mount Airy Eye Care, Jiffy Lube, and Century Business Park. And FYI, for everybody, the Storage Locker folks over at Twin Arch came to the Planning Commission, and already they're starting to run into problems about traffic. So just the same issue we had with, I think, Pank and their property, about the traffic burden that's been placed on Twin Arch and 27, that's going to pop up when they start looking at site plans and things for the Storage Locker facility. So development in that back area is now going to run into problems because of traffic flows. Yeah, for failing. So that's going to affect some of our economic development back in that area, something to be very aware of. There's a road that's supposed to cut back through and come around. Century Drive is supposed to eventually mm -hmm. cut back through, so I hope that's taken into consideration. That'd be a planning thing. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, just FYI. Um, their subcommittees are starting to work on the OPE and MDX, their new zoning classifications at work on. Also, the Route 27 corridor study, that the, the RFP, they're starting to put that together. The Planning Commission decided at the last meeting that um, Heather Barney and some um, uh, PNZ members are going to put together the RFP. The RFP will first come to planning so everybody can take a look at it. 
because in a lot of cases, how you ask the questions for the RFP guides what answers you get. So planning wants to make sure that the community has a chance to review that. And the Route 27 corridor study will kind of set the stage for the future. What happens as we grow? How do we grow from an economic perspective, from a visual perspective, all the way up to leading the Harrison Lashier property, mm -hmm. if yeah, indeed we do decide to annex that. Uh, once that's done, also, uh, you know, planning past the signed ordinance, which we looked at tonight. And then last but not least, uh, there was a recent commission info exchange, and I'll ask Chairman Butts to kind of give the council a lowdown on the um, commission info exchange. Reader's Digest condensed version. Okay. 10 o'clock. This was June the 17th. Four score and seven years ago. Yeah. June the 17th, and it's actually, it was co-sponsored between leadership of Planning and Zoning and uh, Economic Development Commission. The idea was to extend the opportunity that uh, we had taken by re reaching out to the commissions and soliciting their feedback in the, to benefit the development of the master plan. As a result, we felt like we had developed a lot stronger and a lot better master plan by having their input. And so we said, why don't we use that as a kickoff to going forward now that we're about to turn the plan over to, to council and hopefully get the majority of it blessed. Then we're talking about the implementation of it. So why don't we continue that? So then the idea was to invite everyone to basically have an information exchange to share what are notable accomplishments for each of the commissions and primary groups in town. What are your goals for the coming year? Uh, are there opportunities that we could help one another? Is there a request for assistance that you might have? And so I think the better part of 20 to 25 representatives from all of the commissions and several of the groups in town met. And thanks to the leadership and coordination of Heather and uh, Andrew Williamson, at the last minute I had something come up and I couldn't attend. Uh, I understand from the notes, and we've now sent those out to everyone, uh, it was a very, very productive exchange. and. Uh, I think for the most part, and Heather, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, that the original objectives were met in terms of the quality of that exchange. And I think we're off and running. And hopefully that uh, partnership and that cooperation will continue to, going forward. Bill, kudos to you. You're single-handedly responsible for bringing that about. And i got to tell you, it was a fantastic exchange. And I've, it's the second one I've, I've attended where you've brought the commissions together. It's the first for Mount Airy, and you're really making things happen. Yep. Thank well, you. Yeah, Am I next? Yes, sir. Uh, well, I, I see Council. Water and Sewer, EDC, yeah. Arts Council, and I got some special things, too. Um, water and Sewer, we have five variances requested from the fog ordinance. Um, I think Dick was telling me that we have a responsibility to have a public hearing, and the council makes a decision on the, on the variances, so we're probably going to be talking next month to get that scheduled and, and all that kind of stuff. But we Guys, have, um, next 715, next council meeting, I can't imagine there's going to be a lot of discussion no, I, on this. No, I, I can't either. Does that work, Dick? Seven? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So so next council meeting, we'll start with a 715 um, public hearing on those fog things. Okay, and the variances are from... And fog stands for fats, oil, and grease. Fats, oil, and grease, <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> the, the variances that we've re or the request for variances that we've received are from Frederick County Public Schools, Carroll yes. County Public Schools, St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, St. James Episcopal Church, and Calvary United Methodist Church. Okay, so we got the public hearing scheduled. I and I is a big issue. Um, you know, Brian talked. Brian talked pretty eloquently about it. So um, you know, that's something we're, we're really starting to get hot on. We have another problem at water. We have no members. We need members. We have Brian, me, Dick, and Fred Goundry. So we need, we need three or four people. So if you are interested in serving on the water department, fun bunch of guys, you know, you should come hang with us. Uh, they can reach out to Debbie or Lisa and get an application form, a candidate right. application form. I know somebody in the audience is interested. Okay, good. 
Um, economic de development is required to give a yearly report to the town council, which you all just received. Okay, we've been we've been working on that for a couple of months. Um, we are we're beginning to look at state and county programs that can actually offer us some some guidance to startups and existing businesses that are having issues. Um, let's see, and our next meeting is on August the 27th. Um, the Arts Alliance had a very successful summer show here in the town hall and a very successful concert series, the best yet. Um, some of these concerts were packed out here. It was great. They have an August the 3rd fundraiser at Lorienzo's. Um, if you contact Mary Hushauer or Terry King for tickets or info, that's August, Sunday, August the 3rd. Um, I don't know if you, went, if you went to their last fundraiser about a year ago, last mm -hmm. September. It's, it's going to be the mirror image, and it was a lot of fun. The next Arts Alliance meeting is this Wednesday, July the 9th. Oh, and they are so excited just today. They are very excited to announce their new downtown location at 102 Main Street underneath Superfoods. Um, and, I, and I want to let everybody know that Bill Chapman has donated this, this space to them for the next six months. And is maybe, that where you'll go into the side door and down the stairs? Yes. Okay, nice. And maybe, maybe longer. You know, he's, he's liking it. Um, they'll be having an open house soon, so keep your eyes and ears open. And Melissa Hoyle and I attended the Maryland Municipal League Frederick County Chapter meeting last Thursday night. Uh, was it? No, the Thursday night before. It was before Thursday that. before that. The 26th. Yeah, Thursday okay, before that. Okay, um, Melissa got a chance to meet a lot of people and um, hook up with them. And, <laughs> well, I mean, you know. as good as the caboose comments. <laughs> let me, let me, let me. <laughs> well, it wasn't that kind of hook up. But, you know, she met, a, she let, she met a lot of people from, from other Frederick County municipalities where she really doesn't have any, any um, experience with meeting these people. She knows a lot of the Carroll County people, so she's looking for people to network and do the same. But anyway, <laughs> um, after, after, after much negotiation, she was able to get us a POS grant for $24,904.80, which is 90% of what it's going to cost. Which is 90% 90, 90 of what the project costs. We have to pay 10%. But, you know, she worked real hard to get that to us. Huh? I think it's only five, isn't it? No, I think it's 90%. 90%, Melissa? Yeah, and um, it, there was a lot of negotiations. There was about $385,000 that was available to all the municipalities in, in um, Frederick County. And there was, I think, $575,000. $575,000 in requests. Um, the city of Frederick, they, they just backed off and, and pretty much allowed it. They, they dropped $200,000 out of their requests immediately. You know, Randy said, it's been a good year. Um, and then that's kind of the way it works. We had to drop out some of our requests. We had the signs for, two of the signs, that was about $3,000 a piece, I think. Mm -hmm. And we had to drop those requests because everybody was sitting and looking at Mount Airy, you know, your turn. And Melissa said, well, okay, let's drop it. So we dropped it. So we're going to have new basketball courts at Prospect Park. East-West. East-West Park, I'm sorry. Right. Watkins being torn up right now. Huh? Watkins is being torn up now, right? Yeah, um, yeah but I think that's a budgeted item. Yeah. yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, that is my report. Yay. Streets and Roads. Streets and Roads didn't have a meeting uh, last month. Hopefully we'll have one this month. That's All why I've right. been talking, talking to them about having one this month. Water and sewer. Water and sewer, we already did. No, we already did that. Sorry, guys, I'm used to, I'm used to, We're gonna have to rewind. everybody's been, everybody, no, 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 for me too, everybody's in a different seat. So, so I mean, everybody's in a different commission. So I used to know exactly. <laughs> okay, who is Community Center Task Force? 
Is that you, Chris? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, they Can had you... an informal meeting last month due to some scheduling conflicts. Um, uh, just a suggestion to the council, if you're okay with it. Uh, Ms. Felder from the Learning Center, who gave us that unsolicited proposal for a teen center, um, if council's okay with it, it's a stretch for the the community center task force. But I, I want to bring it back and just let them look at it, because um, some of the folks here, in particular Mary Beth Rausch, is sort of our expert on all things teen center. And that need and discussion for a teen center has come up. Ms. Felder attended the community center task force meetings. That's where she kind of got the idea to do an unsolicited proposal. So I just want to run that by and let them take a look at it, see if they have any suggestions for the council. It's rough, but it took me two, two years to get a ride to, so I don't feel bad. Thank you. Thank you. It's 10 o'clock. Thanks. Right. Debbie just texted me. Uh, <laughs> we're going to uh, just to, about advertising for the fog yes. public hearing. Um, and she's asking, just want to make sure we, we set the time, 7.15. 7.15. So that'll be in the ads. So. Make sure she gets credit for these hours. <laughs> <laughs> she's on the clock. She's bored sitting at home, obviously, if she's watching our meeting. There's got to be nothing on. What does that say for modern television that she's watching our meeting? It says meeting? a lot. It, do, it does say a lot about our staff, though. Really. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, with, I'm with Bob. We're hooking up, and we're fun guys. That's our quality. Uh, ten, ten administrator. Ten administrator. Uh, Monica is not here. So. She's sick tonight, but thank you. So we'll, we, we'll so skip we ten report. administrator. Uh, ten attorney report. I'll, I'll save everything for the closed session. All Sweet. right. Uh, code enforcement officer, yeah, those package. reports. Uh, any other business? I don't see any. I will move the bills be paid. Do I have second. a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 I will move that we go into a closed meeting. It's allowed by State Article 10, 508A7 to consult with counsel to obtain advice on. Uh, well, it says here, All the top is going to be change orders on the Main Street project, consult with staff consultants and other individuals about pending or potential litigation and possible litigation. I will also move that at the moment that that meeting ends and is adjourned, this meeting will automatically be adjourned so we don't have to come back in open session. I think, Scott, you get a second, right? Second. All in favor, Rob, before the call around. King? Aye. Then aye. Everett? Aye. Pelt? Aye. 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 Okay, everybody gave us an aye. I forgot all my So we will go to closed session. 